I think this is actually sort of working, although there is some feedback from somewhere. Welcome to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles in Campaign 2 called, appropriately enough, The Great Confusion. I'm your uh, host and GM. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. This is my weird little homebrew world in which uh, I have made up everything except for the things that I forgot to do. Uh, I am joined by my regular pr players in Campaign 2, starting with Silas. Hi, uh, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, human illusionist cultist. Hi, uh, I am uh, Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who is a rogue. Hey, and I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half-orc cleric. And, uh, yeah, we're going to see how this particular works. One thing we're going to do uh, fairly close to the beginning here is something uh, called downtime. It's not like I invented it. But I, I've got a little system in place that hopefully will will uh, will augment and, and manage the things that we need to do. Uh, it is something I have struggled with as a GM to properly present. So let's see if this this works out a little bit better. But let us find out where we were from the previous session. Floating in the water after the collapse of the apparently flying building of Taraz Nakma Daogul, the group discovered that they were much farther out to sea than they had thought. Swimming that far would be exhausting for even the best of them to get back to Ailthwater, and no signs of any ships traveling in the bay could be seen. Regalesta was still unconscious, but seems to be alive. In the meantime, the group began to worry about floating here in the open water, knowing that sharks and other creatures are eager to find food. Turning around to spot any sign of help, Silas noticed a massive tree standing on a small island not more than a dozen yards from them. This, he recalled, was Lonely Tree Island, a strange place that sometimes appears to people in the bay and is seldom found twice. He had been here once before, however, quite some time ago with his then-girlfriend, Molly. They made their way to the island and pulled themselves onto its meager sandbanks. The trees spanned some fifty feet around, and massive branches hung overhead, which were cloaked in large, broad leaves, and, curiously, two different kinds of flowers, one purple and large, and the other small and pink. And apparently, the tree was abundant with fruit, as a large, almond-shaped gourd like a coconut fell down on Medric. Within, he found the milk to be soothing, and the white flesh of the nut nourishing. Annie climbed the tree, and found evidence that others had been... Oops, scroll too far, pardon me. Uh, <laughs> found evidence that others had been there before them in the form of an old shelter. She could also hear a laughing, childlike voice, which bothered her as no source could be seen. Medrick sent a message to Captain Verendel, letting him know briefly what had happened and that they were floating in the water, or in this case, marooned, and Verendel promised to get a boat out to them as soon as possible. But then an odd fog rose around the tree, and the group settled in to wait. Before long they were discussing what had happened and what to do with Regalesta. Silas was torn between his vow not to kill and the weight of what Catherine had said about the necessary passing of remnants of a god, which he believed Regalesta to be part of. As they talked, a young green-skinned girl emerged from the tree near Annie. She seemed elven in features, but with larger, broader ears. Her clothes seemed not so much to be woven in cloth as vines and leaves that had grown together naturally. She introduced herself as Numti, and the tree as Azmunta. She seemed to hear the tree speak, and told the others that they had been here for a very, very long time, and mostly alone. She gathered them around her, even directing vines to live Regalesta up into the branches. When the tide rose, it would cover the base of the tree, she explained. Although she and the tree had seen much in their lives, and seemed to know about a great many things, she wished to hear them tell stories, true ones and false ones, but ones with meaning. Each of them took turns telling parts of the stories, but could feel themselves sharing inner truths in amongst the fables they were spinning. When their tales were finished, Namti seemed delighted, but then became serious for a moment. She had a favor to ask of them, and she deemed them trustworthy. She asked them to carry Azmunta's seed, as both Namti and the tree would soon f fade from the world, 
and she, they wanted something of themselves to live on. When they agreed to do it, she told them of many things the seed would need to grow properly, much like a parent leaving their child to someone else's care. As they drifted off to sleep, Namti promised them gifts for their stories in the morning. And now I'm actually prepared also, as one of the things I was looking through, to give you a date. This is the 9th of Brint of 3108. It's a used day, in case that uh, is of interest to you. Uh, Brint is the equivalent of May, more or less. But because of the storms and weather that had been happening all around you, it really wasn't um, all that uh, May-like weather. But now, as the clouds clear off, the uh, skies are growing uh, more friendly and the temperature begins to rise. The following morning, there is no sign of Namti. The sun greets you, Medric, warmly. You can feel its warmth gathered not only around you, but on the very bark that you're lying on, almost as though the tree itself is drinking in the sunlight. And as you look below, you can see that it has one, uh, it has its branches, its feet, if you will, in the water and its branches in the sun. Strangely, this strikes you as some sort of balance that has struck. Maybe a long-lasting creature like this uh, has, uh, has knowledge and connection of how the universe is held together. It's an odd thought for a morning, but nonetheless, it sort of strikes you. Around you, you see bundles wrapped in what look like rope and what look like uh, 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 branches as well. Bundles of sticks. Perhaps this is the present that Namti uh, suggested. As you start to look through them, um, there are several things that, that sort of come to be realized uh, and in fact, Namti herself will, will make it more explicit. Her voice will be heard, but you will not see her. In one bundle, specifically for Annie, there is uh, a green branch, almost five feet long, and several small tree nubs, little, little buds, essentially, that have been uh, taken out of the tree or fallen off. With this, Namti promises that a skilled bowman or a bowyer can make a great bow for you with Azamunta's blessing. Furthermore, those small nubs can be made into one of two things. You can make them into small throwing darts or as arrowheads. There are four of them. And, Namti promises, there will always be four. They are essentially consumed when they are used, but the bow itself, uh, once it has fully been made, will still be growing. Occasionally it will grow a flower, and that flower will be sweet-smelling, uh, or sour, depending on which of the two flowers it is, and occasionally it will grow a bud, and the bud, bud can, crum can fall off and be used, or be taken off and be used again. But there will only ever be four, but there will always be four. Cool. Um, there is a, a bundle wrapped in leaves and wrapped in a, what looks like a, a vine, which is sort of thickly woven, almost like it is hair rather than, uh, rather than plant matter. It contains lichen and moss. Numpty explains that given hot water and time, these will brew a tea which can bring peace to you. There should be enough there for three uses. The rope itself is 81 feet long and cannot be cut by non-magical means. Uh, inside the half shell of one of the almond-shaped coconut-like uh, um, seeds, there is a small living plant it is the vine, not the tree. It is Numpty's Tears, as she calls it, a large purple flower. One petal can be harvested once a month, and from that you can make a delightful restorative potion. I'll give you the details, but this is the flavor to start with. And finally, um, 
what looked like something that was bound around a bundle is itself the thing to be presented. To Silas, Numpty tells you this is something found beneath the sea, long lost, and perhaps to please the mother, your mother, that is. It is a, a coral circlet with shimmering fish scales embedded around the edges of it. While you wear this, and while you are one with it, you will find that the creatures of the sea are your friends to help. Oh, not doing uh, Thank you. Goes with Silas can summon orcas next. Nice. That'd be cool. Or like a giant kraken. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing. Anumti herself comes out of the very center of the tree, bearing in her hands what looks like a large knot of wood. There's a, a sort of acrid smell, almost as though the wood itself is burning, but does not appear to be consumed. It is about the size of two fists clamped together, knotted and slightly blackened. She holds it out for Medric. Once, no. as a munta was struck by a gift of Ignis. It has been here, held and burning, but Azamunta is more powerful. Now, however, it shall be yours. And she hands this, this bundle to Medric. I'll extend my hands, two hands. Okay. Thanks. Struck by Ignis. Th this fell from the sky? As soon as it lands in your hands, you feel a bit of warmth and an instant recognition. Although the wood cloaks it and covers it, buried within here is a small remnant of a star stone. Whoa. Ooh. I can't thank you enough. Make sure that Azamunta lives again. That is all the uh, thanks that you can give. And maybe, just maybe, before we have passed from this plane, we'll meet again. I would like that very much. And you can count on us to plant the seed. Uh, Annie was saying something too. I would like that very much as a response to see, seeing them before they pass. And I look forward to more stories. So, what you've been given, I do have some handouts for some of these things. Um, it will cost you small money, favor, or contacts to get made. But once the uh, bow, which I have to verify what I've called it. Uh, that's not the screen I wanted. <laughs> Pardon me. Technical confusion. In other words, status normal. Uh, in Kushner. <laughs> there we go. It is called Azamunda's Branch. Azamunta's Branch. Uh, a bow can be made from the green sapling of Azamunta. It seems to be still growing with a small, very sharp nub or tiny pink flower frequently appearing. Uh, it must be dipped into clear water once a week or it begins to dry out. Attacks from this magic weapon have a bonus of plus one to hit and damage. And once per week, if the character has less than four of Azamunta's thorns, a new thorn appears. As for Azamunta's thorns, that's the small nubs. Um, the little nubs from Azamunta's sapling can be harvested and turned into either darts or arrowheads. You may only possess four of them at a time, and if given away, they will shrivel into useless dry wood within a day. You may harvest up to one thorn per week from the sapling if you have less than four already. It does not cost anything nor require a roll to convert the thorns into darts or arrowheads, but takes an hour of work to convert up to four of them. Once turned into a dart or arrowhead, they cannot be changed. As darts, the thorns gain a magic bonus of plus one to hit and damage. Uh, as arrowheads, they do not grant that bonus, but as a reaction to hitting with one of the thorns, either as an arrow or as a dart, uh, you can will it mentally do one of three things to cast Hail of Thorns, to do an additional 1d4 poison damage, 
to reduce the target's movement by 10 feet for the next round, or to impose disadvantage on the target's next strike. Um, yeah. Each nice. thorn, whether dart or arrow, has only one charge, which expends when it hits a target. If unrecovered, they will wither into useless dry wood within a day. So if you don't find your thorn again, uh, the next day you essentially have one less one less thorn that can be uh, that you have, and then you can therefore harvest another one. Um, the thing that was given to Silas. Um, is, I forgot yep. to unmute myself. Uh, are you going to send us this in our journal thing? I have them already. I'm just reading them directly from the Roll Twenty stuff, so I will, cool, cool. I will definitely be uh, sharing them with you. Um, given to Silas, it is called the Circlet of Aquatic Rule. It appears to be very light, fragile, thin band of overlapping, shimmering silver fish scales, but is actually remarkably robust. It has a core of coral and will not come off in the water. The magic item does require attunement. It has three charges and regains 1d3 expended charges at dawn. When you wear it, you can use an action and expend one charge to cast Dominate Beast from it on a beast that has an innate swimming speed. So I will go ahead and... Uh, oops, let me see if I can get those to share properly. Oh... <laughs> that bug in Roll20 is preventing me from changing the the, uh, the show. So I'm just going to show everybody each of these. Hopefully you can open up them. Um, sure. But you'll have them in uh, Roll20. Um, as for the, uh, the other things, uh, it is an 81-foot long rope. And uh, it's, one, it's one trait. It's a sturdy rope and cannot be cut by non-magical means. Um, the lichen and moss can be brewed into tea. The tea uh, gives you greater restoration. And there's enough for three doses of tea. Um, it is a small bit, bit of starstone contained in blackened heartwood that Medric has. Mm -hmm. uh, and it glows, very, it glows like a candle in the dark, but it's not much to, to look from. Uh, it's really more about it being, first of all, a... a um, a uh, small star stone, very small. We're talking about the size of a quarter, probably in the, in the, in the core of it, but also heartwood. So you can make what, of that what you will. Um, that uh, literally, uh, Azimunta grew around this to contain it. Um, the impression you get is that the, the tree was actually struck by the star stone, but managed to isolate itself, but could not destroy or expel the star stone until you were here, essentially. And. Uh, Nomti's Tears. The small living plant, which is really a vine uh, with a large purple flower. Each week you can harvest one petal from the flower to make a greater healing potion. Cool. I do not have Nomti's Tears, uh, the moss, or the rope in Roll20. Uh, I can add them there if you'd like. Should be okay for now, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, Silas will ask Numti about the the rope. Is it only um, invulnerable to cutting? Uh, can, could it be burned or something else? Nothing of mortal lands can cut this rope. But magic can. Well, thank you. Thank you for all of this. Your stories were delightful. I only wish you could stay forever, but mortal beings seem to not like to do that. At the point she says, I wish you could stay forever, Silas starts backing up. <laughs> Just very subtly. Uh... Yeah, but as you've uh, mentioned, it would be great to meet again. I am always here, as is Azamunda, but you don't always get a chance to see us. It's not safe for us to be seen all the time. Too many would come here to plunder what Azamunda can create, or would seek knowledge that would harm the rest. 
Understandable. And perhaps I can just we... picture like over a thousand years from now, Zach is looking for this tree. <laughs> <laughs> then perhaps we should go back into the water and to wait for our the ship that's being sent to us. We don't want you to be found by them. That would be best. Regalesta still seems to be unconscious. Breathing evenly and deeply, but still no sign of waking. If we can bring her down, I can support her. Can I tell if she's gotten better at all over the last several hours? You can make a medicine roll. All right, let's do that. Medicine plus five. Dice oh. roller. I just realized I still have some of the shards of her heart that I picked up as well, so I would put those by her as well. Okay. Well, I guess I'm too distracted by the fact that there's a star stone in my hand. Because <laughs> I, I rolled a two. <laughs> um, as uh, Annie puts the few more shards that she has down uh, uh, by her body, they crumble into dust. And she seems to take a deeper breath once more. Aside from that, nothing seems to have changed all that much. Anybody then, else have shards? And Silas will like, Silas will do likewise with the ones he has. And similarly, they turn He's into still dust. Conflicted, but he'll put them on her. He'll put them over her heart. They kind of uh, dissolve into her, and for the first time in quite some time, her eyes blink open, and she looks around at all of you, confused. Again, her, her look is very unusual for a humanoid that you've seen. Um, the strange gaunt face, the strange sunken nose. Um, that, that seems to be her natural form. Um, and she looks around at all of you. I, I don't remember what... We were fighting something. Yes? Did we win? We had to destroy the heart. We won temporarily, but the uh, vase guy got away. And she kind of sits up and startled, looks at her own hand, holds her hand towards her chest. My heart. I am... I am as I was. She kind of looks and examines we, her hand. I am mortal again. We, we were able to grab pieces of your shattered heart putting them next to your, where your heart used to be, I guess, brought you back. Final blessings. Then it's truly over. I'm sorry. It's not over. You're still here. Yeah, I am to live a mortal life now. I am no longer one of the Avatar. I am no the longer Avatar? a sister. That was right! <laughs> a sister of who? Right. She, she looks confused at you for a second. I do not recall. They who we cannot name. They who we cannot remember. I mean, there's only one who we cannot name. <clears throat> vase guy. <laughs> oh, is he, is he still a vase guy? Considering the base is broken. Well, yeah, we might want to come up with an alternate name to refer to them at some point. Um, I didn't know the base guy. I remember who that is. <laughs> <laughs> base guy skeleton dude. I mean, we could call him asshole, but that can sum up a lot of people. Yeah. Regalesta, you should probably leave as soon as we get back. Where shall I go? Where should you go? I don't uh, know. Can you, hmm? can you still do magic and disguise yourself? I change myself to look like you, except... Wait, uh, I was asking you? that to Regulesta. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I can try. It feels different. 
and Rego Lester is no longer my name. Uh, what is it? Your name, I mean. My birth name. Who I am now. Call me Silene. Uh. And she, uh, and she concentrates for a second. And her form shifts and shimmers. Um, once again, this time taking on that sort of blue-skinned elven form. Small flecks of, of silver uh, and gray shining in her skin. Her ears are not the typical elven ears. They're a little bit, a little bit longer and kind of fluted towards the sides. Would this do? Should be fine. Then I will... I will travel. I will see what the world has, has become. There's, there are well, things you know, going on here. I think given what you were, you're not safe staying here. I think it is best if you were to go elsewhere and become lost to those who may wish to find you. Become someone new. Well, she might not be safe on her own either. We'll discuss this later, I suppose. Right now we need to leave this island for the sake of its safety. And she kind of reaches out and touches the bark of the tree. Um, Namti is nowhere to be seen. Namti helped you kind of lowering Regalista with the vines as she had done before, um, but seemed to have vanished um, back into the tree itself, perhaps. Um and you can feel the, the water sort of lapping against your feet as the small sandbar that's beneath you is slowly once again being swallowed by the ocean. But uh, Regalesto, uh, or Silene as she's known now, just sort of touches the tree, and it seems almost familiar to her. Uh, Silas is going to put on the circlet and then uh, dive into the water. Okay. It does require attunement, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I mentioned it in the email, but uh, overnight, she, uh, Annalise would have uh, reattuned to her ring of mind shielding. Right. right. Yep, the water is cool, but uh, otherwise uh, uh, fresh. <laughs> well, actually, I suppose salty, technically. I'm putting that star stone in the knot of wood very safely in my backpack. Okay. Give Same. final thanks to uh, Namti and go, in, go into the water too. Okay. There's no vocal response, but there's something like the wind blowing through the, the leaves that and the, the branches creaking that you could swear sounded like child, a child's laughter. Oh, did she give us the seed and such wrapped up in something? Uh, she gave you the seed wrapped in leaves, essentially. Okay, I'll just okay. stick that in the backpack then. Uh, you do find it a little difficult to swim with it because it actually floats. That's fine. I have a swim speed. <laughs> um, and Wait, can I have the seat? It'll counterbalance the weight of my armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Life jacket. Yes, yes, but it it'll lift up your backpack so that your face is face down in the water. <laughs> The unexpected use of uh, of the seed of uh, Azamunta. Ah, look, floaters. You just put your backpack on your front like you're walking around Paris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Um, Silene slips into the water behind you, and you, you notice that she stays underwater a little bit longer than you might have expected from a dive. Uh, and sort of when she breaks the surface of the water, um, she does so with considerable force, almost as though... While she is the mortal version of herself, the sea is still a natural element to her. With the last of you kind of diving into the water, glancing over your shoulders, already it seems as though the sun is too bright for those except for Medric to shine through the branches of this tree, making it difficult to see. And for you, Medric, you do not have to worry about gl the glaring light of the sun, and you do kind of make out a small figure standing on one of the upper branches, waving to you. 
as the whole thing seems to vanish into a blur. I'll wave back as it vanishes. Make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> uh oh. As Frederick sinks into the water. <laughs> well, I figured I'd do it with like the hand that wasn't holding anything. That was that's a nine. Nine. Um, you're hit smack in the forehead by a, a, an apple. <laughs> and a box that floats in front of you. Ha, uh, uh, ha, I'll grab the apple. <laughs> As you look around and look towards the horizon, you can actually make out the broad form of a ship. It's got an odd shape to it. And it takes you a moment to realize the odd shape is because it does not seem to have a mast. Those of you with good eyesight, though, can pick out the uh, flag on top. It is indeed the Errant Widow, but mastless, as you remember, that was destroyed uh, during the uh, spout incident, but still seeming to move through. There's a, 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 a loud call that, that uh, rings across the water, a call of stroke, stroke, stroke. And you can hear, oh, as it gets closer, the sound of the, the oars dipping into the water as they are doing it the old-fashioned way. I will uh, tell everyone... Um, I'm going to duck your, duck your ears into the water for a second. Uh, I'm going to get their attention. And then uh, a few seconds later, he will yell out at five times normal volume, uh, uh, crew overboard over here, that sort of thing. <laughs> All right, the uh, the uh, the sound echoes throughout the entirety of the bay and definitely echoed up the side of the hull of the ship. In return, it's followed by players firing into the sky with <laughs> pressed digitation. <laughs> hey, that's pretty useful. Yeah, uh, th there's isn't there there is actually a, there is an actual like uh, fireworks spell too. I think that they added. There's later. pyrotechnics, but that's partly a damage spell too. Right, right. Well, within a few seconds of the response, you hear the not quite as loud response of Ahoy there! And the, the entire ship starts to slowly turn and drift towards you. Uh, once again, kind of the even uh, call to the, the numerous rowers that are, are uh, working hard to move this tremendous ship. You probably didn't need to have a ship this big to rescue you, but at the same time, there wasn't a lot of other uh, boats on board. And this is a bit far out for most of the, the uh, smaller fishing uh, dinghies and stuff. Uh, but within about a half an hour, the boat finally pulls in uh, nearby uh, and they start to let loose um, large nets over the side to make it easier for you to crawl on board the ship. Um, there you're greeted by Gaetano and Loan. Loan is actually just crawling down. Well, sorry, not crawling down from the crow's nest. There is no crow's nest. The mast was destroyed. <laughs> Uh, but sort of the, the peak of the ship where he was sort of standing and he was looking out. You get the impression that he was actually the one who spotted you. Um, that being sort of his his role in the ship. Uh, but Gatano, uh, looking a little bit rough, um, you get the impression that from where you were and from where when he got out, he may have swum back. Uh, but that was before the entire thing took off. And that was still a very long, uh, a long travel and he was exhausted, so um, so he's looking a little bit bedraggled as if he's he's not really still caught up on his sleep, as I know that well. Uh, and then, uh, uh, but he does greet you heartily and welcome you on board, along with uh, Captain. You made it. Uh, yeah, well, you know, kid, it takes a lot more than the sea to drown me. But I'm glad to see you folks. I was a little worried for, well, land and country, you might say. He kind of winks at Annie. <laughs> that was brutal. Uh, we so should have, like, pretended that Annie was dead or something. <laughs> no, this is her twin sister, Fanny. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, this is her ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. You just spilled flour on yourself and are saying, woo, I don't know. What <laughs> Would not want to do that in wet clothes. Yeah. 
but uh, Gaetano welcomes you on board, as does Captain Stoutheart. Um, they uh, quickly get you uh, some some heavy blankets to kind of get yourself warm again, invite you down below, uh, and chat a bit with you. Um, the, they are turning the ship around and bringing you back into dock, but it's going to be a while because as fast as they can row, they have to take breaks, uh, and they only have three crews to row. Uh, so what is the tale that you tell Gaetano and Captain Stoutheart? And I will give you some idea that you probably would have thought of what you were going to tell people. Yeah. Um, so you can talk amongst yourselves about, about settling the story. Uh, when they go to give Silas a blanket, he just waves them off because he's already dry. <laughs> okay. I'll take the blanket. Then everyone else is quickly dry as well, but if they want to keep the blankets, they are nice and warm. Um, it does well, take a few minutes for, for that to work, but yes. No, I've I've got it instant now, remember? It's one action and I dry a person. Oh right, right. It's like dry, 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 dry. <laughs> um and who I'm not you... sure Well I, I believe we should tell Gaetano the entire story. The other yeah. thing is to um... is to keep in mind what you're gonna talk about with Silene as well, or rather what you're gonna tell about Silene. Um. Actually, Silas will just introduce her as uh, someone we found, uh, someone else we found down there. On our way. Yeah, and if she introduced herself as Silene, we can probably just use her name. Yeah. And she gets um. a character sheet out. There's... I think to just Gaetano, um, at some point, I will make sure he knows the entire story of what happened. Um, but in front of the captain, I would uh, tell our agreed upon cover story. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got a 24 deception roll. Since you're all participating, let's see deception rolls from Annie and Medrick as well. I'm just staying as quiet as possible. Okay. <laughs> so is Eileen. Uh... She's kind of agreeing with the rest of the story. So I think at one point, Medrick, you say the you say the name Regalesta, and then you're quickly corrected by the other two. Uh, doesn't seem like the captain noticed. Whew. It's hard to tell with Gaetano because he's pretty observant for the most part. And later, he's going to get the full story anyway, so it doesn't really matter in some ways what you say in front of him. Um, but there's a sharp look from him as he kind of uh, kind of catches on to what's going on there. Um, and the other than that, I'd basically just tell them everything except, except he refers to Terrace as trash, because that's close enough to the name he's not likely to forget it. <laughs> uh, and he tells them that that is not his actual name, but if you say his name, he will notice and he will possibly come for you. Would he? I don't know. Every time Down there he did. Every, well, Out in the open, would he? Uh, last time you mentioned his name, uh, I think at the inn you got a sudden chill. So it certainly yeah, seems like before that there was like a thing of wind in a basement. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was it. It was in Marigold's place. Right. We should let Marigold know what happened. He might. Sure. We should also let him know not to use that name anymore. Yep. Um, he was very hesitant to say it in the first place, so I don't think he would, but... Yeah. And he did witness the same thing you did with the uh, the strange after effect of saying the name. Right. We do have to uh, meet this Clockwinder character at some point, too, but that'll be a task for later. 
Mm. Um, as for the the uh, the Lonely Tree Island, um, which is probably safe to mention that too, because I mean it's a local it's a local story. So we just say that we found ourselves there, and then it disappeared. Yep, and we uh, we headed for the ship. Okay. So what? It sounds like most of the story just came out. Is there specific stuff you are omitting? Uh, the Athlonian part of it. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Uh, probably. We can just say that Trash is just a real big bad guy, and you don't want to say his name because he might notice you. Yeah, we'll tell him later. We'll tell Gaetano later, but like not now. <laughs> it's safer not to know. Uh, I think at uh, statements like that, there's a look that passes between Captain Stoutheart and Gaetano, which is sort of one of those knowing looks, as in we will talk later. But they, 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 they there's a few points in there where they're they're kind of very observant of of what's being said, and there's more that they may know from this, but they aren't going to say. So you're giving. Yeah, a little I, bit of that Annie would omit would be the fact that Athlon is involved. Okay. So. Um, later <laughs> on, do you do you mention that to Gaetano? Like, do you give him the entire story? I would give him the entire story. Okay. Um, and the captain yeah. at that point would have been invested basically back up on deck supervising and making sure that the crews are, are well watered and fed in order to make it back. Um, there's also, she would have mentioned that um, they're only working on a skeleton crew because the rest of the crew are actually out getting a new tree and getting it ready to be replacement mast um, for the errant widow. Uh, Gitano does tell you that um, after after he escaped, he and Lowen escaped, um, they managed to sort of sneak around the outside of the cave before the entire earth basically behind them tore upward and what they witnessed was the emergence of the arm from the sand um, which uh, was very difficult to get away from um, the the waves were pretty strong but it scattered most of the um, the uh, sea devils that were still patrolling around uh, and the uh, when it launched the spout itself continued to press outward the entire thing turned down and was basically pushing the entire arm upward, um, which is where you felt the whole place kind of rolling and twisting and turning. Um, and it seemed like that might have been its, its actual purpose, if you will. Um, when they both surfaced, they saw this gigantic arm floating in the air, um, kind of shifting, and then suddenly it, it sort of sunk downward and crashed into the water once more, uh, way out into the, into the bay. It seemed to be heading in a very uh, distinctly western direction, but everything is west from the bay, so um, it doesn't really tell you all that much. And it didn't get too far out, just kind of out into the deeper water. Um, Apparently it was a titan. Part of one. It was yeah. the arm. <laughs> I wonder if the entire body was down there or if it was just an arm. Probably just the arm, or he, they probably tried would have tried to put the two together first if the body was there. Yeah. They're probably scattered around. I mean, I imagine the gods are pretty thorough when they try to destroy something. Mm -hmm. oh, Can't titans. be destroyed as far as possible. The Titans are more myth than reality, or at least I used to think they were. But now that I see that, it makes me wonder what else is buried out there. I knew there were a lot of ships buried, but that was not something I expected. I thought they were a myth, too. Just stories that they used to tell children, but uh, Terra, uh, Terry said he was going to raise one. Or Some make one return. And from the corner, um, Celine, who hasn't said all that much, it just kind of pipes up and adds, Some myths are because the truth is too scary. I find there's something to most myths. And, uh, are there any other 
myths we should be aware of? <laughs> Too many to name, I think. And the truth of them is often obscured over time. Stoutheart seems to get a little disturbed at all of this, and this is when she makes her exit out onto the top deck, leaving it with uh, with Gaetano. Do you, Annie, um, specifically want to wait to talk one-on-one -on -one with Gaetano, or, or is this sufficient enough, or do you want to wait until Silene's not here? What are the conditions under which you're telling Gaetano everything? I mean, I have no problem telling him in front of everybody else. Uh, if they start to... Uh, try to prevent me to, I'll stop and I'll just tell him later. Okay. No, I won't prevent any from saying anything. No, so I should be more concerned about you possibly revealing Gaetano's stuff in front of Silene. Uh, he'd probably suggest that she leave before we talk, uh, before there's any talking with Gaetano. Fair. And Silene doesn't seem to be bothered by this. Uh, in fact, kind of looks like she's reveling in the idea of being on shore or on, on the, the deck and just watching the world. Um, it, it seems weird even when she just stands up at that moment and you get the feeling like she hasn't really done any walking for a long time. So even that is a little, not awkward so much as novel, um, taking the, the world one step at a time. And going up Silene, on the top. think about who you want to be in this world and what you want to do. You're at a point where you can become whoever you want. And she kind of turns back to you with a quizzical look on her face. And I think I have some things to account for. She also can't forget her past entirely. We'll leave that up to her. And with her out of the room, then you basically uh, have your talk and explain everything, so that Gaetano is fully up to uh, up to date. So uh, I like, wait, Gaetano's a secret agent. His name <laughs> is Oswin. Oh, I think I remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was revealed to you folks because, and I think, I think the captain knows. Yeah. Lehman knows. Yeah. Uh, and the random guy who was in jail knows. <laughs> the, the random guy who was in the jail, yeah. Uh, but that's basically it, I think, at this point, who actually know. Um, and I think along either along the way, or I don't know whether you handed to him at that point, but his actual, um, uh, his personal crate, his personal uh, uh, chest you had found down there, and return to him, except you, I think you kept the papers, or he told you to keep the papers. I'm going to keep uh, the papers. Because there were, there were other things in there. His seal is in there, for example, which is something he really did need to have. Um, it's kind of embarrassing not to have it, but, you know. We get the seal out and feed it something. Sorry, <laughs> <they board>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, there's a, a, a small amount of a... a a thin wine. It's not a very strong wine. It's more of a, of a digestive than anything else, and along with some food is delivered to you. Uh, and it's a rather pleasant ride on the way back uh, to uh, to town, or to, uh, to Eltwater. Um, it's a bit of a, of a difficult maneuver in some ways because there's just, they have to come in at the right end of the tide, so there's a little bit of delay as they get close enough and then realize they, they can't bring this large boat that close. Um, but uh, they, they pull off one of the dinghies and, and kind of Gaetano. Actually, no, it won't be Gaetano. Another one of the others will row you back to shore. Um, Somebody yeah, that's exhausted. Would, <laughs> yeah, they would have a launch. Because Gaetano I mean, is... We can, we can row ourselves back to shore, too, and yeah. they can just take well, it back. Yeah. That's the thing yeah. is they need to get they need the thingy back. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, we'll help with the rowing. We can do the rowing on the way back so that they don't get more tired. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably, well, I don't need to name them, I guess. I have the entire, well, half of the crew of <laughs> the Air Widow named, but you probably don't need to know that. Um, so, um, you arrive back in town, and it it still looks a bit beaten down. Um, you get the impression that the, the battle and the twisting and turning of the spout 
uh, kind of continue to spread heavy water all over the town. Um, so there are still some buildings which look a bit cramped. There's that segment of the wall which was still kind of busted down. But otherwise, it's a blue sky overhead. And for the first time in a, quite a while, Ilthwater looks to be somewhat at peace. You can even, weirdly enough, hear laughter as you walk up the main uh, walkway from the dock towards the town. Uh, there seems to be a life that's returned to the, the city after uh, all of the siege it had been under. And that's where we're going to step into some downtime. And I would like to point out just a quick thing. Um, the 11th of Brunch is actually uh, Annie's birthday. Is it really? Hmm. Yeah, I, I I randomly rolled it and I, I was like Brent 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 wait. <laughs> so is that today or two days from today or two days? Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, well, there um, there's two small things Silas would like to do. One, uh, we have to go to the uh, Three Bells Inn for breakfast because yes. I want to let them know that we're still alive. And yes, it was us that uh, defeated it. It's, uh, it's more like mid-afternoon at this point, but yeah. Sure. Brunch. Breakfast for us. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is, on the way there, Silas is, uh, looks at uh, the both of them and says, I think I'm going to do more of our stories as performances. How do you want me to refer to the two of you? Uh, I would... I wouldn't present your names or anything, but it would be as I did before we left uh, the Three Bells last time, where I made us iconic entities, the uh, the cleric of battle, um, the uh, shadowy mage. Uh, how would you like me to present you in stories? Yeah. So that Adric, can... my tax evading, my tax evading cousin. <laughs> now that's too yeah. obvious. Uh, it wouldn't be by name. Just what of your traits would you like me to present? Because this way, you can insist it wasn't you, if you want, uh, or you can let people think whatever. But before I do anything more with this, I want, I would like to know what you two would prefer large powerful fire big muscly and flaming yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i think you just referred to me like as the lady or something uh i, I think so i i tech i think i technically said she was noble but then i thought oh no should not use that one <laughs> <laughs> But yes, oh. it could just be the lady or the subtle lady. Classy. I'm kind of the opposite of classy, but you know. Uh -huh. um, just some random person, you know. Nobody important. Move along. Mm -hmm. Move along. Yeah. Move along. Don't look at me. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> In the uh, illusion, she's just a stick figure. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I, I think just the the lady. Okay. I'll do that because I think I think we're going to want to spread to some degree our stories of of defeating these things. I think it would be good for morale. Yeah. And potentially useful in the future. Um, and then, yes, we just return. It's like, we're back. We're alive. Told you. We, what is it? We can't live, tired, hungry. <laughs> there were people there, and there were bad people, and there was ass kicked. You have to put it all, make it all kind of separate from yourself a little bit. We kicked the Rudy ass. Has been kicked. Arm. We ass kicked that arm. Ass therewith has been thus kicked. <laughs> Tonight, by me, you will not be tricked. <laughs> uh, so, um, what you're going to find is that although there is a lot of rebuilding going on in town, um, it is coming back to life. 
and there isn't anything that really draws uh, your attention that strongly in terms of negative things. There will be a couple of things in these four weeks of downtime that happen. Um, One, the mast is repaired on the Errant Widow. It does take another week before they're ready to sail, but Gitano is setting sail for Alaria. He's going to make a report in person about what's happened. Um, He's not going to snitch on Annie, is he? That's uh, up to him. I've <laughs> saved his ass twice now. He, he knows. <laughs> it's it's mostly it's mostly he asks uh, Annie. Um, uh, three times, also. <laughs> we found him after he got his his butt beat at the temple. Yep. Oh yeah, he's had a rough yep. rough, rough go of it. Um, he's been uh, kidnapped, smashed into a wall, and then kidnapped a second time. So, uh, kidnapped and tortured actually the third time. So you know it, gets, it escalates a little bit worse for him. But he would ask uh, Annie if there is uh, if if there is anything that he should pass on to her parents about her, or if he ca- he has to he does feel uncomfortable lying directly to your parents. And if they suspect something, they are not above ordering him or finding a mage who can make him speak. So he has to be careful. Hmm. I'm not running away from them. I just need to do this for myself and they wouldn't let me. I think I'm, it's been long enough and I'm far enough that you can attest to the fact that I'm okay. I will definitely, so, definitely can say that you can take care of yourself. Um, but I will be somewhat vague about your actual location. Because I, I know your parents, that. and I will not be the only one who happens to be here, I suspect. Um, that is fair. Um, I do think that uh, the situation concerning the Baron does need to be brought to their attention, though. I will, I will myself. myself. Whoa. Whoa. Massive echo. Uh, I will. Uh, I will bring the attention to them directly, kid. But uh, if the Baron is still, and that in, power, in itself might bring, end up bringing me to their attention anyway. So, are we here when Annie is discussing with uh, Gitano? I guess that's kind of up to Annie whether or not uh, the farewells and discussions would be held with the other two. They've been involved in the entire thing so far, so. Okay. And uh, if, if you can find the time, uh, could, could you mention that uh, the, te- the, the Temple of Ignis in Elfader needs rebuilding? <laughs> oh, above the Baron's head. <laughs> I can um, do what I can, but um, it's not the king and queen's policy to interfere in local politics, unless necessary. And frankly, Understood. from the perspective of the reports that have been coming out of this area, nothing had been wrong. Taxes were still paid. Peace was still kept. There were some concerning reports of bandits, but that's a local issue. So frankly... And I would have also brought brought the fact that like they had like over double, uh, quadrupled taxes as well, which is concerning. I'll be sure to mention it. Yeah. They had increased the guards quite a bit with those taxes, but most of them are dead now, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but yeah, th- those would be the, the things. She she trusts Gaetano's um, judgment on, on the matter. I think bringing the Baron situation to their attention will probably end up causing other people to have attention here. So the chances of her being found are a little bit higher. So, I but think, she, uh, like I said, she's not running away. She just wants to be able to learn on her own. And the running away was a the way she had to do that. I think the investigation is probably where to go next, anyways. Sorry, I missed part of that because there was an echo. 
uh, so it just says that uh, we probably want to go check into the Baron once we've prepared uh, anyways, because uh, the, not Princess, their daughter is currently keeping an eye on things and waiting for us to help. We don't right, want to... I wonder if she's okay. We may want to check on that while we're preparing. Yeah. Yep. All right, kid. Well, don't get yourself in any more trouble you can't get yourself out of. And if I'm ever in trouble, I'll, I'll make sure it'll be wait for you to knock down the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there, was, there was one more thing I wanted. Uh, did he do the thing with the captain to be able, like, be my reference to do the thing? Can you be a little more vague? <laughs> Brain is forgetting. Uh, the the like job thing that he that Verandel was like, oh, but if Gaetano signs off on it, like it should be fine. Let's say oh, yes. Yeah. I've forgotten it for the moment, so um, let's say yes, and we'll get the details later, I guess. So it was just the the like job thing he needed to send to the Baron, but he was like, if I can get Gaetano to sign on it, I can probably skip that step without. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And now that he has a seal, that's easy to do. Because uh, yeah. he can actually speak in a certain way. He can speak for the king, although he's very uh, the king and queen. But he's very um, he doesn't like using that power very much. Um, it's it's literally pulling rank on the Baron, but the Baron in this case may not know. And since there's also yeah. suspicions about the Baron, then yeah, he's willing to do that um, for you. And she's like animals. puppy dog eyes, like please, I <laughs> saved your life twice now. <laughs> At least I know that with Captain Verandel on your side, you'll have someone watching over your shoulder. That too. It's a rather handsome young man too, don't you think? You can say that. <laughs> Medric uh, just snickers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we can we can if there's a couple of other things to be sent to be sent or to be said to get down we can we can retcon that but essentially within that first week of downtime the errant widow sets sail uh, and he does say he's going to be at least a couple of months before he's going to be back um, because yeah. it's a couple of weeks just to get there and a couple of weeks to get back under normal sailing conditions and he's got other things he's got to do <laughs> um, he's got some overdue cargo really uh, speaking of that, over the next few weeks as well, cargo ships start returning um, and coming through the port of Elthwater. Word gets out that it is uh, uh, no longer under siege, uh, and the uh, commerce starts to uh, heat up in both directions, both more ships coming in as well as caravans coming up the road uh, from Pitajun, up the uh, King's Road from Pitajun, uh, and also from the uh, nearby mountains and so forth. One of the other things that happens um, is the Chamberlain, Chamberlain Aknarada, uh, on behalf of the Baron and Baroness, announces a return to a summer tradition that had been uh, away for several years. Uh, the Midsummer Festival. There will be a Midsummer Festival on the 17th of Yuri, which is a little over a month away. That's uh, June, right? That would be June, yeah. Uh, in addition to hiring entertainers in the town, there will also be a new monument installed in the center of town and a private party at the Baron's estate for the town's uh, elite and wealthy uh, happening around that same time. So, What kind of shenanigans will we be getting up to when that happens? <laughs> <laughs> uh, entirely a good question. So I just need to copy and paste something and we'll get right into the downtime actions. So the way that we're doing downtime actions for those uh, who might be watching this, but also uh, kind of for um, the players, because I've sort of uh, given them an announcement of it and sort of not, uh, is I have a system for, for downtime to um, to kind of give some, some structure and management to it. Um, it works in work weeks, very similar to the downtime that's in uh, DM's Guide as well as Xanathar's, but I've kind of expanded it and uh, and given a little bit more system to it, as well as trying to um, produce something which is going to be useful outside of downtime. So um, the purpose of downtime, uh, one of the purposes, one of the main purposes, 
is to build up resources, uh, resources like money or contacts or favors. Uh, and those resources can be spent in downtime to increase the possibility of getting better downtime. So it gets to be a little bit of a self, uh, self-building self game. Or you can use resources out of downtime. For example, if you need to find something, you could spend your contacts uh, and uh, have someone who can get that for you. Uh, or you might uh, receive a reward. And I'm going to be doing things in sort of a, a large, chunky format, an abstract format. There are three sizes of resources, small, medium, and large. Most of what you're going to be dealing with right now are small. The only kind of, uh, actually, I think that's the only one that's going to be, or there aren't any that are going to be uh, medium at the moment, uh, but you could build up to them. The uh, rules are a bit of a work in progress, so there's going to be a little bit of um, manual mediation, I guess you might say, uh, and making sure everything works. But hopefully it runs fairly smoothly and we get a chance to kind of introduce this uh, going forward. There's a couple of other uh, things that happen. Um, one of the things that happens is because of your downtime activities, you might get involved in some risky activities. Well, then there are some complications that can arise out of that. And sometimes those complications can lead to, well, basically abilities for the GM to put pressure or to, uh, to modify certain roles. Uh, one of the most simplest ones is debt. If you ever are called to spend money you don't have, you incur a debt. And that debt could be called in for something later. Uh, and it should be paid off earlier or it will accumulate. Uh, another one is uh, you might, dis- might discover someone becomes your rival. Uh, a rival is an NPC, and we'll actually build up an NPC, uh, that uh, might interfere with your plans in the future. They aren't an enemy necessarily, but depending on what activity you're doing, uh, there might be appropriate uh, things. Like, for example, you might get a bad reputation and find it hard to get work because the rival has spent resources to make nasty rumors about you. Uh, you might get a, an injury, so I'm adding a new thing called an injury into the system Injuries basically are longer lasting consequences of being in some sort of fight. Um, there will be, I, I have a, a, a rule kind of idea in place, but I don't have it uh, finalized yet. And we are likely to encounter injuries in this particular part of it, but just know that they are there. Um, generally, only once you get into medium activities do you start to get any sort of risk that would get to an injury. Um, and there's only a couple of specific ones, like pit fighting. <laughs> Pit fighting or mercenary <laughs> work has the chance of getting an injury. Uh, but there's also opportunities to overcome those. So uh, in the future, for example, suppose you do get um, some sort of nasty uh, condition um, that you are uh, blinded um, for a while. Well, those conditions can also be overcome with the recovery activity. So I don't want to go through the Greater restoration. Right greater restoration also works, but keep in mind that greater restoration costs, I think, 100 gold. Uh, yeah. or actually a gold, uh, sorry, a diamond dust, I believe, worth 100 gold. Uh, or it might be the 300 yeah. gold diamond, I forget. No, that's Damn the 100 it. gold okay. diamond dust. Uh, well, you shoot in the dark, eventually you hit something. Um, so, uh, but instead of being, if you don't have that resource, if you don't have the, the diamond dust on hand, um, you can take a week, a week basically to recover from that. So there's an opportunity for that. Um, this was originally what I had planned with the campaign, then we kind of got right into gaming on a, on a minute by minute basis with the players, uh, with the characters rather. And uh, as I was kind of reviewing some of my notes, I was like, oh no, I did promise we were going to have downtime between major adventures. So I'm trying to introduce that now uh, and, uh, and uh, allow a couple of things like longer term activities. Um, for example, I'm quite sure that Medric wants to uh, build the Temple of Ignis and grow the followers there to get more support. Uh, locations oh, yeah. like that uh, will give you free resources. Um, for example, if you build up a bar, there's a chance it can build up resources like rumors or information or contacts. So that's a way you can invest what you've uh, found uh, in the town. Wait, you mean like a bar like annexed to the Temple of Ignis? Well, <laughs> it was more than give you a separate business. But if if uh, signature Ignis, drink uh, Molotov cocktail, if, <laughs> fireball whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> If uh, keeping in mind that you'd now be supporting two businesses at that point, because uh, they'd be yeah. separate businesses, and it does require a bit of maintenance uh, cost essentially to maintain businesses. So that's just the introduction. Uh, what I've given to the players was kind of an out, uh, outline of some of the things they thought they would get involved with, and they kind of give me some responses back. Um, so we're going to go, I think, a, a kind of round table uh, week by week. Some of the weeks are going to go very fast. The intention is that. 
After a bit of description, um, there's a usually a role. The role determines how good the outcome is and how many resources you gain uh, or lose, depending on what the activity is, um, for that. So um, let's start with, let's see. I just got the specifics. Okay. Um, would it be possible to split up the stuff that we were going to split up first? Oh, yes. Yes, certainly. Like items. Also, we've got to figure out how, like the what the gold was that we get back in that big, big bag. Right. Would it right. be possible yes. to have a bathroom break real quick, too, please? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> be right back. Don't take all my stuff. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. There, there was a bunch of stuff that you guys acquired, um, some of which you can sell off, some of which are going to provide you with the resources you need. Um, one thing I will say is because of the money you already had, each of you are going to start with a small money resource. So small money can be spent usually on small activities. Uh, it can also buy you things, uh, or if you just keep it around, uh, having small money that's unspent essentially is your lifestyle payment. So small money gives you a, uh, a modest lifestyle um, for a month. Um, so it is possible to work for a week and live for a month. So um, let's see. I have the list of things here. Um, oh, that's one thing I didn't determine. So excuse me as I just try to find uh, my list. Okay. Um, the other thing in here too is that uh, for anything that might be magical, determine how you're going to determine what it is. Because there was a couple of things, I think. Um, uh, yeah, there's one thing that uh, we didn't know about, and that was the wand. That Silas would spend a short rest studying it. something up all right a little bit of water water hose right there so you can start talking if you need to so the wand, yes, does require attunement, so you actually can take the time to attune to it, uh, and then you discover sure. exactly what it does. Um, yeah. <clears throat> is it the thing that I thought it was? Why am I second guessing myself here suddenly? Um, oh, okay. Yep. Uh, it is in fact a wand of binding. Um, which can cast hold monster or hold person. Uh, it can also be used to uh, gain advantage on saving throws against being paralyzed or restrained or to make it uh, advantage on escaping a grapple. Uh, it does require attunement by a spellcaster. Uh, I'm basically using the standard wand of binding in this particular case. Yeah. Uh, and it has seven charges, uh, regaining 1d6 plus one expended charges daily at dawn. Uh, it is fragile. If you use the last charge from it, there's a chance it will be destroyed. Yeah, so basically, Silas, for those who present, we've got the Amulet of Courage that Annie was currently using. I we've forget got... what that is. Uh, it's a non-attunable item that has three charges, and you can spend charges to get a plus two against fear and such. Okay. Um, and so we've we've got that. We've got uh, the Wand of Binding, which can only be used by a spellcaster. And we've got the Ring of uh, Spell Storing. Uh, Silas says, I'd like to use the Ring of Spell Storing. Uh, in particular, I'd like for Medric to fill it with healing spells, uh, so we have a backup healer. Yeah, I can do that. Um, do we still have any of the healing crystals, by the way? 
I have one. I used mine. I think okay. I still have one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, if we split it, that Annie gets the Amulet of Courage, I've got the Ring of Spell Storing, then Medric gets the the Wand of Binding. Um, does that sound okay to everyone? Yeah. What does the um, Wand of Binding do? Is it in the uh, thing? It's in the DM's guide. Uh, it can cast, it has seven charges. For five charges, it can cast Hold Monster, which lets you cast the Hold spell on any creature. Uh, for two charges, it'll hold person. Uh, you can also use charges, I believe, to help you get out of bindings and paralysis. Uh, yeah, to, but, to gain advantage on saving throws, avoiding paralysis or restrained. And yeah, also okay. to uh, uh, make advantage on getting uh, escaping a grapple. Yep. Yeah. But if you Does ever use... Does I just have it on me or do I have to have it in my hand to use it? You have to be wielding it. Yeah. Damn it. And, okay. and it is attunement as well. Yeah, it's attunement, and uh, it gets the D6 plus one charges back every dawn, but if you use up the last charge before you let it recharge, there's a one in 20 chance of it disintegrating. Okay. So you I'll always just... want to keep one charge in it if you can. I'll just uh, look at it real quick, and it's like, well, if I'm wielding this, it means I'm not wielding a hammer. Nope. But maybe it maybe I can hold it in my hand and punch people. Well, you probably want to use it when you're not trying to beat someone up. Uh, yeah, but it could be something you stick in a belt and pull out to use. Um, yeah, uh, as, a, as a saving throw one, you would have to be holding it at the time. Yeah. Because it's essentially a reaction. Yeah, I think to use anything out of it. But, uh, the only other stuff to split up is I think there was some basic stuff that we could just sell and then there's a big bag of coins wait so if, and... if i'm holding a shield then there's like two straps that go here but i'm actually holding anything or could i like have the wand behind the shield well you're well you're holding one of the straps normally okay yeah when you hold a shield I you're that's not a cosplay shield damn it well and, and not only that the shield you actually fight with so you need the direction of having the hand there to actually get it to hit the right spot yeah. An attempt was made. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are four spells currently in the Ring of Spell Storing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to find the... the or sorry, there are three spells, or four spell levels. Uh, there is Catapult. Okay. Um, chromatic Orb. Okay. And acid arrow. Okay. So it's only got space for one level of spell at the moment. Um, but those can be cast out of it by the wielder. That does require attunement as well. Yeah. Yeah, he would attune to that one. And I don't know if he'll... But if he'll keep any of those in there before he gets uh, Medric to cast some healing spells into it, but uh, he'll think about that. Uh, and yes, money. How many small monies do we have? Monies. <laughs> okay. So the bag of coins alone, um, there's a couple of different ways to split that up. Um, it's either, and there's another issue with translating between the, the small, medium, and large, so this is a little bit of a rough translation. Uh, but essentially, that 30-pound 30 ba 30 bag of coins uh, turns into five small money or two medium money. So it's actually quite a significant amount of money. Um, as you look into the coin, you start counting it out. Uh, in particular, I think uh, Annie would notice that the coins, uh, a lot of them are very, very old, and a lot of them come from all over. They are, uh, for the most part, there's only a few Alarian coins in there. Neat. But at the moment, you can choose five small or two medium. Uh, smaller, more versatile, especially at this level, but medium gets you that bigger chance of doing something bigger. Um, 
Uh, how does that work with, uh, we have a few other things that were just like, oh, we can sell those for 22 gold and we've got a couple of silver rings and a silver chain. Would that be enough to make six small? Then we could split it up to each or. Uh, yeah. Or if people want to, we can pick two of us to get a medium and one to get a small. I mean, if. If selling all of the the little bits and bobs uh, would that, that we found during this would get us two me uh, too small each, then yeah, I'd be fine. With that. I'm fine with that. Was there was there anything yeah. of note? It was just like some basically scrap metal and there was, there's a couple of silver rings and a silver chain. Uh, there was a necklace of semi-precious stones that had a face carved in ivory on it. I don't know what that was worth at all, so it might be more than a small. I don't... That's up to Mark. With a lot of these things, it depends on the buyer. Um, most of these things, if you sold them together, would add up to a small. If you left out one or two of these things, like if you left out the necklace with the semi-precious stones, it would still be a small. So effectively, that's, that's uh, worthless in a certain sense. Uh, unless you found the right buyer, and then it would be much more uh, worth on its own. Yeah, I, I think that that necklace stands out a little bit, but I'd like to try to find a, a buyer specifically for that. Sure. Um, yeah, the two silver rings and the silver chain. Yeah, that basically adds up to a small. Okay, well, I mean, if we can sell the the assorted unknown rings and lockets without the necklace, for a silver or for a small, then yeah, we might as well do that. And then we've got uh, two each. Okay. okay. That's including the uh, the silver ring with the tree stamped on it. I don't remember that one. I know there were two silver rings we got from the smelting area. Okay, this wasn't from the smelting area. Okay, yeah, that one I don't have. It was before the mason's tools, so uh, that that one I want to keep because okay. it seemed yeah. different. That that one seemed to be like a family crest or something that she wants to try to figure out where it goes. Sure. So, but that yeah, that, that was before I got the the mason's tools, so I don't think it was that one. Um, I guess the other thing we've got is the gems. Oh, sorry, we've got the gems and the spices and coffee. Yeah. Uh, so among the gems um, is uh, I have to check on it, but. Um, Just need to, oops. Because Medrick is going to be interested in any diamonds he can get. Yeah. <laughs> We're all going to be interested because uh, I'm pretty sure they can be used for resurrecting. Yes. Re reviving. A any spell you. components, I, I leave to you guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any yet. But... Uh... Yeah, I'm just sorry. I'm just looking up the, the spell components uh, because I forget which. I don't have any like raised spells yet, but I mean, eventually. Uh, you should have revive. Yeah, revivify is within your range because it's a third level spell. Okay. Uh, and there is one diamond. Yeah, this is the one. It has one di one three hundred gold piece diamond, um, which essentially is a medium money, but it's also the one necessary for revivify. So you would yeah. have a use of that if within that bag of coins or bag of uh, gems. So there, there is one of those in there. Yes. Okay. Um, the rest of the gems put together make three small. Are there any gems of particular material notes or just uh, generic semi-precious gems? Um, essentially, you could spend, or, or instead of getting one of those smalls, you could translate that into a high-quality gem that could be used in a magic item or could be used in, uh, if there's particular spell components that require it, like chromatic orb. Um, yeah. I don't have any yet that need it, unless I... I don't think I need one for casting chromatic orb from the ring. No. But to cast it into the ring, I would need it. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything yet. I'll eventually need a pearl, but that's next level. Yeah, so there are no pearls in yet. that particular bundle. It's just gems. 
Um, that okay. was that was them sorting out the bits and pieces they'd taken out of um, any silver items before they smelted them. So, um, so there's one three hundred gold diamond, and the rest would be two small money. Uh, three small, actually. Okay, I don't mind just giving the ja the diamonds to Medric because yeah. he'll be the one you get to yeah. keep one of us alive, and then that gives us a fourth small money each. Yeah. yeah, and in in future, for reference, if you want to buy a three hundred gold uh, diamond, that is a medium. That is one yeah. medium money, so it's worth a lot. Uh, you might have luck finding one. You might get lucky harvesting, but it's hard to harvest those. Okay, I'm just crossing things off that we have here. Okay, it's the bag of gems. Um, I has diamond. Uh, and I will say, Annie, if you wanted to keep a few of the sample coins from the bag, the ones that are from different nations or different ages, you could do so without changing the, the, the overall value of it. It's just a couple of gold pieces. Yeah, I, I'd probably keep like a handful of, of them that like stand out. Like I'll grab the older looking ones probably, or if any of them have anything that really stands out to me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I will probably detail some of those a bit later. Uh, just um, to uh, say, too, that because you, you brought it up, uh, Marie, the Dwarven tools um, are a, a set of quality tools, including a hammer, a set of chisels, tongs, ornate silver set square, uh, and all of them are completely untarnished, despite being buried in a temple for a long time. Uh, Dwarven made, and they do have a stamp on them of the Stonebreaker clan. So they are... They are a high quality item. Um, you can sell them if you like, or you could try to research them further, or you could try to talk to dwarves about them. That's up to you, but just to give you that, that general idea. Cool. That wasn't the same clan as the woman that led us underground, was it? No, that was um, okay. Pit Digger. Uh, the last two things we have uh, that could be done now are the uh, the Robo Rat. Uh, Silas would right. the ruby gems out of the eye sockets because it's not working anyway. Um, and to do see so what we will can destroy get. the item. By the way, because they're they're embedded within the the head of the item. Okay, it was I working think. earlier. Is it working now? Now that it's more direct? no, no. It was, I, it was when you working. shake it. it had Inside. Yeah, um, and that's partially because there, you don't have any any easy way of breaking it open, and it's a tool set that you do not have. Okay, maybe we can I'll bring it to uh, yeah, maybe we can bring it to Clockwinder or even a uh, dude, Marigold. I don't trust Clockwinder with doing stuff because I think that yeah, that, uh, yeah, that he works for ta uh, Terry. <laughs> Yeah, I think that this is a way to get us into Sea Clockwinder. Fair uh, enough. But if I can get the the eyes out, then we can sell the eyes and just use the rat to get in. Because, uh, hey, we found your rat. Do you want it? Um, okay, so we can leave that for later. Uh, there is the box of spices and high-end coffee beans. Uh, we could try selling that to that rich restaurant. Uh, that the captain goes to the silver button. I actually looked it up. Yes. Yeah. Um, unless people want to keep them for their own purposes. Um, yeah, I mean, okay with the regular coffee. I have no problem with that. Um, make a let's see, what would it be an appropriate um, society knowledge role for Annie? I thought I had already rolled about knowing these beans and stuff. I guess so. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Um, I can't already identify them as Valarian coffee beans. And... Well, I, I guess the, especially in light of the fact that there is a big party coming up. Um, yeah. The, you, could, you could certainly sell them, and the restaurant probably would buy them, but they may also be a bargaining chip. Yeah, that is fair. But again, yep. again, you're welcome to sell them if you want the money at any point. So, I mean, I'm fine if uh, if Annie thinks that might uh, 
get us into something there. So, because I had already determined that these were quite valuable. Yeah, this is the okay. this is the uh, Lopak uh, was it Lopak Koa um, coffee and uh, fennel, not fennel. Um, shoot, oh, I forgot. It's the it's the really expensive. Uh, you buy it by the ounce for tens of dollars kind of spice. Um, yeah, saffron. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I'll say too, and I think I mentioned this to you, Annie, uh, you do have Gaetano's papers. They do require time to study. That can yep. be a research activity, and that gives you um, essentially uh, two small um, special resources for two weeks of research study if you want. Yeah. Um, Would I be able to go up to the farm to give like use the majority of that two weeks to do that study, but spend like the weekend going up to the farm to give the wind trucks the rest of the money to pay their labor for the year that I promised them. Yeah, you, you, you would turn it into a research activity you're doing there and uh, we're going to have to get you headphones or something. <laughs> Find out some way of getting that, that feedback not happening. I'm sorry. You, you can go up there. You won't get any, you won't get any benefit from the work activity. It'll be a research activity instead. So the outcome yeah. will be a research outcome, not a work outcome. Um, but yeah, yeah you, you can I just, I just want to get them their money. Yep. That certainly works. All right. Uh, anything else, uh, that needs to be, uh, uh, divvied up or translated? I think that was pretty much it. I had the same list. I just forgot to look at it first. Yeah. I think that's everything. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, we have that magic protective box with no key, but, uh, that, I mean, we might as well leave till later. Maybe we can have a key made or something for it. Right now, I'm the only person who can open it. So, yeah, yeah. seems secure enough. And I mean, it it, do, it won't hold a lot, but what it will ha hold, it seems to keep safe, uh, even from water and from uh, being found in a refuse pile. <laughs> I honestly would probably put my papers in it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, considering considering you're the only one who can open it, that's even better. At yeah, least, <laughs> at least as far as you know, you're the only one who can open it. Someone possibly could smash it open, but that'd probably take a lot of work. All right. Um, so we'll start with the first week. Just going through here, just checking what we have. Um, so let's start with uh, start with Silas. Um, oh, I just remembered something. My apologies. <laughs> Uh, where are we going to be keeping the seed and such? Mm, good question. Silas will say that despite the the bad rumors, it might be pretty safe at the with the clan. Um, he says he, he likes the three bells, but he's not sure that someone wouldn't go looting through our stuff at some point and maybe steal it. Uh, are but... you sure your family wouldn't loot? through your stuff i'm the harbinger i'm pretty sure that my personal family anyways is not going to i don't know about my aunt and uncle but i'm working on dealing with them uh, or if there's some if there's some place out of town we could hide it um hmm. i mean it's not something we can constantly keep an eye on could yeah. we hide it at the windows? Not tell them what it is, but just that it's something valuable and maybe we're giving them money in exchange for taking, like, keeping this in their barn or something. They might be more willing to take money that way. Some people are a little proud to take money if you just give it to Y'all don't know about this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, could we hide it at the wind tips? <laughs> yeah. Um, or maybe what about uh, Captain Verindel? I don't I know. Trust him to keep it at the guard tower, just because I don't trust Riemann. But well, that's the thing. I don't. Tr I don't trust Riemann. And Flip and Flax have joined the guard now. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Don't trust the guard position at the moment. Um, I, I think I can probably convince the Winthrops to to keep it there. Okay. Make sure they uh, don't plant it. Yes. That could be bad. Um, 
but yeah, I think that way sort of keeping it in the middle of nowhere where no one hopefully would expect it. Maybe no one will go after it. Um, uh, and the other thing is where do we keep the tea moss and that living vine flower with the, uh, the Namtis tears? Um, those are a little less worrisome. Uh, they could be kept at your place at the Three Bells if you want. Um, we just kind of need to store them until we need them. And... Or Numpty's Tears just put it in a plant pot and people will think it's a plant, they won't steal it. That could be yeah, fun. That's yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like we, we could keep it at the Three Bells in one of your two rooms and just water it occasionally to make sure it's fine. Yeah. Um, same with the tea moss. I mean, you're right in a place that makes tea, so it'd be easy to use if, if we have to. Um, and if people steal our belongings, they won't steal a plant or tea. Mm. <laughs> um, and the rope might be best the same, like one of you keep it. Um, it's, I mean, it's magical rope, but I don't think anyone's going to murder anybody for it. Um, okay. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> I'll be sure to call it yeah, that's, first. <laughs> that's everything I have. I just looked down and realized, oh, there's all this stuff that we were just given. Uh, this is the stuff from today. <laughs> that's true. We dealt with the backlog. <laughs> the star stone I'm keeping in my bag. Okay. What could possibly go wrong? You're just going to carry that around with you all the time? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to just leave it in my room. It is like a sacred relic. And it's not yeah. super heavy. And he's the strongest person, so. <laughs> Wait a sec. Okay, so um, so I have a Graveler in my backpack, too. So it's getting pretty stuffed in there. Yeah, Graveler's much bigger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you're yeah. carrying kind of a, a, a bag of boulders, I think, at this point now. So. <laughs> With the two of them. Are you, sure are, are, you, are you sure you're not part... Uh... Dwarf. <laughs> no, I'm just worried, but like, I suppose that if Graveler is like inside his ball, then it, it's okay if he's not summoned. Because like, don't uh, Zorans like to eat precious stones? <laughs> they eat stones. Uh, yours is technically probably some form of metal or stone or something, so... As long as you don't let it out and say, hey, please take care of this wood-coated, tasty item. It's going to be like... Oh, God, uh, that would be uh, like a Baby Yoda moment. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly right. My head went, too, actually. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know how to make a a, uh, a four-foot, three-leg, three-armed, mouth-open-at-the-top thing seem as cute as Baby Yoda in <laughs> the other times. <laughs> um. Well, wow, Annie literally just vanished. That's just the lag, I guess, catching up to it. Um, okay, so uh, I think now <laughs> we should be able to do a little downtime. Uh, see if we can how, how we can get through this. The first thing on your list uh, uh, for Silas, um, I'm actually going to say is a religious ceremony, but it won't be religion. It will be a resolve role. Um, if you want to describe okay. kind of what you're looking, what you're aiming to do. Um. Yeah. Well. Uh, he does end up in town for a little bit during this because he's getting stuff for the festivities. Uh, and during that time, he does leave Nikki with a little bit while he, uh, with his grandparents uh, for a little bit while he's shopping and such um, so that they can play with them. Uh, but basically, he is um, setting up a celebration in the clan lands uh to show that uh basically uh the mother has talked with him uh she wants she wants to come to this world uh and uh it's a kind of like we can do this like together uh we will bring her uh to our home uh where she can watch over us uh, evermore sort of thing. Um, basically, he'll probably be doing it as kind of a performance because that's what he knows. 
uh, he will be using uh, illusions uh, to show them what she looks like. Uh, in particular, probably at the height of it, he'd use the uh, the big illusion spell, the major illusion that actually does like all the senses, but only lasts for like ten minutes, I think. So, um, and he's also kind of doing that because. The last time he made an illusion of her, she actually took it over. So if she decides to make a personal appearance, all the better. Uh, in general, he's using this as uh, making it, uh, making allies within the clan and trying to uh, push up his position in it better. Okay. Uh, also, he'll be looking for someone who can sculpt to see if perhaps they can make a sculpture of uh, of. Uh, Mother Hydra, because we kind of got to have something. We can't just keep worshiping illusions. Okay. Religious services, which is generally what this is falling under, uh, has no cost. Um, you can add investments, which means you can spend resources to uh, improve that. Uh, basically, spending a medium resource turns it into a medium outcome. Um, or you can make investments, spending resources to make your role come out better. Uh, basically, each small resource spent adds two to the roll, each medium resource adds four, and each large resource adds eight, um, which can lead to much better outcomes. Um, in this particular um, case, I think the resource you're primarily going after is favor, because you're looking for that person who's going to be able to do that. Um, but uh, contacts are also available. I have a general notion of what renown is, but I'm not going to implement that at this, at this point. We'll, uh, sure. we'll figure that out later. Um, now you don't yeah. have to invest if you don't want to, you can make it a straight roll. Uh, and then generally there will be some outcome that comes from it for the, the simpleness. Yeah. Uh, can I roll performance or do you want me to roll religion? Uh, in this case, I don't mind it being performance. That's more of what this religion actually is. Um, it's kind of an ecstatic religion in many ways. Um, okay. Uh, Hashtag will, well, yes. <laughs> I will say well, something I'm kind of I, I like the idea of is if there are additional uh, non-specific resources you can add in to make to uh, to to invest in the role. In this case, you're adding your illusions. I will count that as a small investment, so that'll give you a plus sure. two in the role as well. So that goes for everybody. Obviously, he's using uh, spells in this case, uh, but Annie, there might be something out of your background or something else you can apply to that. Um, for example, or you might, for example, throw in the coffee and say, well, that's, that's probably a, a, a decent investment, um, as a, as an exchange. So, uh, go ahead and roll your performance plus two. Uh, he's going to put some extra into it. Okay. Just so we can see what happens. What is he adding into it? Uh, mostly it's, he's spending money. Okay. Uh, that's what he's got right now. He doesn't really have any other resources. Is there but particular... he wants to make this stand out. Okay. Is there a particular thing that the money is being spent on, or you just want to say it's money being injected into it to to add a feast or add a... Well, um, yeah, mostly it's going or to be... Pizza. Well, better, better feast. <laughs> I mean, it could be you buy, like, a better, you know, um, set of fishing nets, or, you you know, it's a fishing village as well, so... Well, this would mostly be for the celebration, so... It would be probably um, part of it would be money actually spent uh, with the guild people uh, who would be cooking extra uh, amounts of fish and extra dishes because he wants he wants it basically to be like all fish stuff that the clan would get. Uh, it's the clan's wealth. Uh, but he would be bringing in probably like a couple of kegs of like beer or ale or mead or something. And then maybe a couple of bottles of like uh, better wine that he's bought at the town while he was in there. Um, okay. So I think he's going to use one. He's got four small money. He's going to use one to increase the outcome to medium. Does that change for other stuff? Uh, you need to spend a medium in order to get a medium outcome. Okay. I thought it was a small to go from small to medium. Okay. Uh, then he'll just spend it on bonus then. Okay. 
There's a limit uh, of, of three resources that can be invested at any time. So it doesn't matter what size yeah, they are, but this would be two investments. This is, yeah, this is a big one for him. Uh, so he'll spend the three resources. Okay. Well, it's only two money because you've got the, the resource of your, your skills, essentially. Your okay. Magic so that counts skills. as one towards yeah. the limit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, total so of plus he'll six on the roll. Two, uh, oh, lost my character sheet. Here we go. <laughs> so, you get lost performance the without the bonus yet. So, 18 okay. plus 6, 24. So, a, a decent outcome, but you still only get two small res or two more small resources from it. Um, I would say okay. your first resource would be favors. Okay, so I was looking at the, uh, you must have a different chart then. I was looking at the original uh, page. It said five. Um, for an 18? No, for 24. The 18 is before the extra plus six. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, no, that is five. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking at the 18. Nope, that's five okay. small resources that were gained out of this. Um, so you I can with... choose favors, information... Uh, contacts. Uh, I'll go with two favors, uh, two contacts. Well, I'll make it three contacts, but one of the contacts I'll I'll use immediately for the sculptor. Oh, actually, sorry. We were talking about something and I'd implement it, but I forgot to mention it. So okay. some resources cost more to purchase. Favors ah, cost yes. two. Favors yeah, cost yeah. two outcomes to actually be to uh, become a, uh, a one. So. Okay favor and then three contacts one of which he'll i'll immediately turn into the uh the sculptor guy okay you've got your sculptor and with contacts you can feel free to actually create an npc or you can ask me to create the npc or we can leave it blank uh in other words it's just somebody you met and you met and used them and now they don't you don't matter who, who they are so um, yep okay. so that is silas week all right there's the first we've done uh, we've done one week Let's see if we can get through. His later week, we that yeah. too, which is I just had, wanted to make sure you knew what he was doing for the performance. Nope, that's good. Uh, the next one I'm going to go to is Annie. Uh, Annie, for your first week, you were thinking about doing patrols with a guard. Oh, you're muted. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to do the uh, the first few jobs with that new uh, nifty title i'd probably spend it more like doing stuff that guards can't so like more infiltrating areas like keeping a low profile mixing in with crowds and catching stuff that way versus being a stern presence around okay that sounds good the charleston uh work is work is pretty easy it uh the uh cost is nothing uh you've already got the job so you don't have to actually go get the job um, outcome is small, but you can make a small, uh, this is one of the few that you can make a small investment to increase that to medium. Um, but you can't go larger than that. Basically you're spending money to be in the right places at the right time for the right work. Um, resources gained primarily it is money. So this is one of the ways that you get money is by working. But after that you could be making, uh, uh, additional money or contacts or favors or rumors. Most of them can be a gain from that. Uh, I have to expand my list here. I think, yeah, I think in general I'm going to be allowing favor, uh, favors, rumors, and information uh, to come from anywhere. So that also reminds me that uh, rumors and information uh, uh, are different like favors. Rumors actually cost less. Uh, you get two small rumors for the price of an outcome. Rumors have the downside, though, that they could be false. Um, so they are, they are very much uncertain, but then they're usually broad, uh, information on the other hand is like favors. It costs two, uh, but when you get it, you know, it's true. And, uh, okay. these things are a bit abstract, so we can either resolve them, uh, close to immediately. I will ask to kind of fill out, have some time in the week to fill them out. Uh, or we can leave them as abstract and you can spend them as resources later on. Cool. Uh, as for um, this, sorry, go ahead. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, you go ahead. Keep, keep explaining. <laughs> Just uh, you you kind of uh, led towards what skill you're likely to use. It sounds like stealth is likely to be the skill that you're really looking for. 
You could also, in this case, use deception or persuasion uh, to kind of pretend to be the, a different person or just to, to blend into the background. Um, snooping specifically is looking at areas where you could be caught. This is a little less risky to do it as work, especially because you have a job. Um, so there's no yep. risk involved. Um, so the base is a, a small, unless you want to spend to investment, and you can spend investment on trying to get a better outcome, which is basically increasing the skill role. Um, and you said that if I spend some money, I can get more money, basically. You can bump up the outcome to another level. Um, work is cool. the easiest one to do that with. You can only bump it up to medium. Yeah. Um, then... You don't have any medium money, though, to spend on it. Right. Well, yeah. uh, no, but uh, work is one of the few places where spending a small gets you the next level. In the ah, case nice. of the religious service, you have to spend the higher amount in order to get there. Yeah. No problem. Um, cool. Um, my brain is, like, trying to organize. So we all have got, no. what, four from that breakdown? Yes, we each have four small money. So f five with the one that we already had. So yeah, I'll I'll sp spend a small know, money. It's, to... it's four with the with the the one we already had. We got an extra three. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'll I'll use one of them to to work. Okay. So and I will use stealth. And you're gonna use stealth. That makes it a medium outcome. Um, there is no risk involved in this one. I'll have to think about that later because you're kind of specifically doing a, a riskier activity, but for now, I'm not worried about it. Uh, yeah. uh, it. It's more patrolling undercover versus patrolling in uniform that my brain is thinking. Okay. Not not standing out as a guard. All right. Okay. So go I'm ahead an and resolve. Right? You can, uh, okay, 23 is a pretty darn good, good role already. 23 without any modifiers. Yeah. So, uh, as for your outcomes, you get two small outcomes and one medium outcome. Okay. There may be a, a, a <laughs> an issue with how easy it is to up, uh, update uh, work. I'll have to think about that. But for now, I'm standing by it. Two small and one medium. Uh, and again, you can turn that into money. So you made a big collar. You caught a, a big crime guy. You can turn that into contacts, favors, rumors, or information, keeping in mind that rumors uh, cost uh, two for one. Uh, sorry, cost uh, one for two. Information and favors cost two for one. Um, so money, rumors, information, and contacts are my options? Money, rumors, favors, information, and contacts. Yep, that's it. Uh, so I'll do a medium money, a small money, and one contact. Okay. So one, uh, work? one small contact. Yep. Yeah. You've made a contact and you can kind of determine who that is, or we can determine it, uh, yeah, who that is, or we can make it open. The idea with contacts is it's not necessarily different people that have all these contacts, but they have different contexts which which you can you can contact them. So you might know a guy down at the docks, and you can pile all your contacts into that person, or you might know know different people. In this case, you only know one uh, contact or for one reason. Uh, the medium money though will give you a pretty good investment into other things if you want. All right, we are kicking the tires. So I do reserve some. <laughs> some oh shit that didn't work kind of moments but I think we're pretty good so far um, for Medric uh, you were looking at work as well um, yep sorry I was on mute yep no problem uh, once again uh, it is it is no cost and no risk but it's only a small activity uh, if you want to invest your money you can move it up to a medium activity uh, and then get the chance at medium rewards is that week one or? Yep. Okay, because oh, week sorry. one I was just going to do like carousing and No, I just realized relaxing. you sent me another yeah. another sheet, so I got, I got it backwards. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, uh, carousing. So um, carousing is to specifically find out information um, and, uh, and uh, networking is where you're looking for people. So I, I don't know whether you're looking for information or people. Information. I was going to catch up with uh, Lissandra. 
Okay. Like the girl I helped during the Sawagan attack. Okay. Uh, carousing does cost money or contacts. At this point, all you have is money. Yeah. Um, the outcome level is the same level as the cost. Um, that one cannot be increased through uh, investment, but you can make the roll better through investment. Um, with uh, uh, with this information is the first resource to be to be gathered. Then rumors, contacts. Uh, actually, rumors and contacts are the only other things you can find. So keep that in mind that you're looking for you're you're out there asking for information. We can keep mm -hmm. it general at the moment, but as soon as we decide what it is, that's when it can become applicable to something else. Um, information and rumors um, can be used outside of downtime. Essentially, once you resolve what they are, so in the case of rumors, you actually get the specific rumors, or in information, you get the specific fact. Once it's resolved, it basically turns into a bonus when you use it. Um, small information or rumors uh, give you a plus two, medium gives you a plus four, and large gives you a plus eight, a single bonus to, to something. However, if you find out something that can be applicable more than once, you've got good information as well as that, that neat little bonus uh, spike. So, how would you like to resolve your carousing? Typically, it's used for sort of persuasion, deception, intimidation. What would be Medric's style? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to like go to the bar that Lissandra was at because I asked her, it's like, hey, if you hear anything about the diamond, can you let me know? Okay. So I would allow insight as another possible one there. Um, and if you can make a case for another skill, I'm certainly open to hearing it. Well, I don't want to use intimidation because, I mean, she's not somebody I dislike, you know. That's fair. Um, Could be persuasion. Yeah. Keep in mind that while Lissandra's there, it could also be other people that Lissandra introduces you to. So she's more acting like a contact in that case. Um, yeah, so that, you, that, could use, that you, could, you could use intimidation where she's like, I know that there's certain information, but I'm too afraid to ask. I guess. That's up to you, uh, however you'd like to flavor it, basically. Um, you can also invest additional um, resources in this. That basically gives you bonuses onto the roll. You don't have to. This happens to be... All right, I'll buy time. a round of drinks for everybody, I guess, that okay. she's with, if she All is right. with people. So mark off one small money to start the carousing, and then one small money to give extra drinks to people. And then you'll make your roll with plus four. How many small monies did I have again? Four. Uh, four. Uh, actually, I just checked because of the stuff that Kathwan had given you guys. You, I think you and Annie actually might have another one because there's that hundred gold of stuff that you never sold. Oh yeah, actually that'd be another small resource. Yeah. So Annie would have had five, and uh, Medric does have five. Okay. So go okay, so ahead. I got three and, now. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make your your roll with plus four. Please be good. Eh. A fourteen. Okay. It's passable, I guess. It's above ten. It is above ten, which is good because that's when the rewards start happening. Uh, at 14, though, the only outcome you get is a small outcome. So that'd be small information. And uh, beside that, you've already declared it's for the diamond. So um, you can choose to resolve that. Technically, you would choose to resolve it right now, but I don't have anything on hand. So I will have something for you next week if you want. It'll be a true fact about the diamond that you've uncovered. Okay. Or you can hold on to it and trade it for other things if you want. Um, it's a little bit weird, I admit, but I'm still debating about how that's going to turn out. But congratulations, you have small information. Back to uh, Silas for week two. 
that one is also carousing, looking into the diamond, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. Um, yes, MJ, I coughed. <laughs> oh, um, I will say too that things like hiring people to do things doesn't require a downtime action as such. It's not an activity. So, for example, if Annie wanted to spend the small money to get the bow made, um, she could do that and it would be ready in a week. Oh, sorry, Ooh, two weeks she, for that item. Uh, a small money for that, you said? Yes. Cool. I would probably have done that then. Um, and one of the reasons it's a small money as opposed to too small money is you have the resources necessary to put into it. Um, it's yeah. the, the, the bow itself or the, the wood itself. Okay, so with Silas carousing to also look into the diamond. Yeah. Um, also, he just says a small thing. He finally puts that crab to put shell on the shield. I don't remember if I ever mentioned it before, but it was meant to be there. So he now has a crabby looking shield. Right. Um, it's a non-effect item. Um, it looks cool. Uh, yeah. So, yes, week two. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's called carousing under the new one. Actually, I think he was snooping, basically. Uh, well, carousing uh, is when you're going out to talk to people. Snooping is when you're basically trying to hide and sneak around a place. Yeah, it probably is better at the the talking. Uh, okay. Is it cost in money or contacts? That determines the level of outcome. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, he's going to use one of his contacts, someone from the clan who feels in the underbelly of... Uh, Buying and selling. Okay. Uh, let's start this up. Uh, yeah, that's probably going to be. What's this persuasion at? Not terrible. Um, yeah. He'll spread a little money around. Okay, so you're going to invest some small money in. Okay. Yeah, hopefully he gets lucky. All right. So persuasion plus two. Uh, yes. Ooh. Oh, that's right no. over the threshold. That's that's yeah, plus super close. Yeah. So he spends two and gets essentially, yeah, yeah, that's the risk. Uh, but you do get one small information about the diamond. Okay, so yes, he has a small knowledge. All right. Oh no, you said knowledge costs double. Oh yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Uh, uh, okay, so what happens there? Because the primary thing is knowledge, but I can't actually select that one. Uh, you can get rumors, or you can get contacts. So rumors you get more, but you aren't sure of their veracity. Yeah. I'll take my loss and get my contacts back. Okay. And in, in cases like this, you know, the story leads what's really happening. So it can also be that the person you have within the clan, you know, they, they led you down a garden path, tur didn't turn out, but they're willing to do it again. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, looking at Annie, I believe you're going out to the Winthrop farm in your second week. Yes. And so to drop off a small money, I guess. Okay. Because I, I think, because I had already spent half of, uh, give, given them half of the amount. So. Okay. A bit of an update because you actually go out to the Wintrip farm. Um, you are a bit surprised to see that there are other people at the Wintrip farm. Uh, they've taken your advice. They are risking, um, basically, if they don't have a good crop and they don't get good sales for their cows uh, they're going and sheep, they're going to lose money. 
but they have risked and hired on. Man, how far down do I have this in my notes? Um, wow, I'm still scrolling. Okay, clearly I've gone by it. Um, or did I delete? <laughs> Of course, I deleted it from this particular one. One moment, I have to look at previous notes. <laughs> Previously oh. on, because uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you guys would go back. All right, right there is it. It's one of those things where I try... Annie promised people money. She's going to make sure that they get that money. <laughs> cool beans. There we go. Yeah, I keep all my notes until I reach a certain point. So if things don't come up in a session, you didn't go out to the Winthrop Farm, for example. I eventually deleted that from my notes, but I had it in a previous one. Um, you actually find there are three people working there um, for a little wages. Uh, Clada, who is a female half-elf with light blue skin. Uh, remarkably similar in some ways to uh, Cyrene's own skin, but uh, not the same kind of ear shape. Um, Darius, a, uh, a young, uh, young man, uh, with tanned white skin, um, who has a haunted look about him. And the third one is someone you recognize and they flinch when they see you. That is a green skinned half orc soldier, uh, named Arniv. And if you recall, Arniv was, I remember her Medric had worked with before. Arneve was one of the people who was working with uh, the people who were assaulting the temple before, but uh, was both convinced by Medric and the ass kickery that was happening towards a group to say, to hell with this, I'm out of here. Uh, She's the one who, who was in the group that stole their cattle. That stole their cattle. <laughs> she was in league with them. That's right. Uh, and uh, although she does seem, does have sort of a, a guilty look and, and winces a bit seeing Annie, there is a sense that, you know, hopefully she's doing legit work here and not just caging them for cattle again. Uh, but uh, uh, those are the people that you see there. Uh, let's see. Um, oops, wrong file. I was like, where is that going to? Oh, right, other file. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> So you're going to go there, you're going to deliver that and spend the week with the Wintrips. Uh, yep. I'll have you make an uh, insight roll while you're there if you want to try to determine more about the three people that are working for the Wintrips. That's basically a free roll, something observed while being there for a whole week. Okay. Twelve. Um, Darius never really opens up to you. He just seems kind of a bit um, on edge most of the time and kind of avoids you. Um, Clada used to live in the town itself, uh, had uh, been a caravan tender, but when everything went to hell in the town, she said, I'm getting out of here. And the Winthrop farm is about as a, pretty much a paradise in compared to what was happening in town. Uh, and Arneve, you get the sense that Arneve is trying to work off her sort of psychic debt for what ha what she had been part of before uh, and is there kind of genuinely trying to do right. right. Now, for your actual research, uh, you have the uh, papers from... Um, Gaetano, I kind of blanked for a second there. Uh, yep. So you don't have to spend the favors, money, or contacts. You already have the resource that can be spent to activate the research activity. Mm -hmm. um, it is small. Um, okay. There's not much way to boost the outcome because it's not going to get any better. Uh, but if you had, for example, if you had contacts or you had a favor of someone who could help you with this, you might get more out of it. In this case, you're kind of doing it on your own and with uh, Gitano's notes. Uh, and yep. the fact that it starts at small means his notes are a little harder to interpret than you would like. Yep. 
So uh, in this case, uh, typically uh, you resolve using something like investigation, arcana, or some other skill appropriate to the task. Um, if you um, have another skill that would be appropriate, I certainly am open to that. Uh, yeah, no, the, the only other thing that comes to mind looking at myself is like forgery kit. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so investigation... Because, yeah, I have I mean, history, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, survival might be appropriate. Um, yeah. Because they're essentially his survival notes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's all it's all honestly the same. I have plus one in survival, investigation, and arcana, so... Okay. Uh, uh, in this so... case, there is a small risk... The only mm -hmm. risks that can really happen to you are setbacks, which means mm -hmm. it takes an additional week to to interpret things. Um, Perfect. Risks are determined ba basically based on uh, saving throws. In this case, it will be uh, wisdom or intelligence saving throw. Cool. So, let's uh, start with the outcome. I'll I'll go with survival because that seems like what she would she she had keeps her own survival on like trip notes so okay that would be um when we are all done this uh, if you could send me the outcomes uh, so that I, if i need to do anything to make sure that i have my list correct um, mm -hmm. for example some of you have gotten small information or whatever or rumors um, make sure that i have that list after we're over after we're done today cool so it's going to be a straight-up survival roll to determine your outcome for this week. Yeah, it is a nine. Uh, yeah. Nine is not enough. No outcome. You find nothing in this uh, to be able to, to hang your ideas on. Um, so if only because... I, I, I had done it while Gaetano was here, I could at least bounce some ideas, understand his chicken scratch. <laughs> Essentially. Um, in this case, the resource isn't consumed because uh, it is a uh, resource that does actually have information in it, but you're not able to glean anything out of it. Um, now roll risk. Risk is, in this case, a uh, either intelligence or wisdom. I don't mind it being either one. Saving throw. You can invest resources in avoiding the risk as well, but in this case, not much. Uh, one small risk. So you are set back. That cool. means the next time you do this, it will actually take two weeks of your downtime. Cool. Um, then can I change my second week to I'll, I'm going to shelf this and do what I originally was going to do with the... Um, what was I going to do? I was going to do some networking. Uh, yeah, that'll be your third week. Yeah, in instead, yeah. Yep. So instead yep. of spending so a second week on this now... Yep, yep. And you can always come back to this as another activity later. Um, okay. Or if circumstances change, like in most cases, there's opportunities to, to change. Um, okay, back to Medric. Eight. Um, for the, let me see, third list. There we go. Um, Shit, I spent too much money carousing. Now I got to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so back to work again. Mm hmm. Or wait, no, you you were carousing instead of working. So yeah. Yeah, it should be the second week for him. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, uh, work is no cost. Outcome is small. You can add investment to try to increase that to medium. Um. Uh, and then you can gain money, uh, or contacts, favors, rumors, information, and there's no risk. So. Are you going to spend anything on it, or just try to get the the, the 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 results i'm not going to spend anything okay um what it's just hauling crates at the docks unloading and loading ships you, okay that could be athletics yep definitely <laughs> okay so make your resolution roll at no bonus ah! oh nice 23 like one crate each hand you know <laughs> you do excellent that week you earn four small resources hey um, first resource is money, so you get one small money, and the other three can be more money, contacts, favors, rumors, information, 
remembering that uh, favors and information cost two. And rumors give you two for one. What would you like to have for the other three? Okay, so you said I earn four small resources and one of them has to be money? Yes. Okay. So I got three left. That's right. You said information, resources, or rumors? So information, favors, contacts, or rumors. And information or favors cost two. Rumors cost one, but you get two of them. I'll try to get information. Okay, so that costs you two. So you have small information. And so you can pick And up can I pick what it's about? Uh, sure. Let's say that I'm chatting with coworkers as we're like loading cargo and it, I mention Clockwinder. Okay. And somebody tells me stuff about him. Okay. And you still have one more resource to pick. Um, you could pick right. uh, rumors or you can pick money or contacts. Money. Okay. Back around to the top for Silas. Your third week. Okay. You're building stuff. Yes. The exact details will be found out at the end of the downtime. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yes. Uh, so, this is a small okay. item you're making, so it's a small cost up front. Uh, no yep. continuing cost. <clears throat> um, well, since I am using stuff I already had, would that cover the cost? Uh, yeah, I'll count that as a small small materials. So that counts okay. as well. Okay. Then I'll make a roll. All right. 17. Uh, yeah. Okay. That would be too small. One of those is basically the item itself or, or part of the item. Uh, and the other one, let's see, was there any other benefits? I think that one didn't have any other side effects or side bonuses. Yeah. And there's the risk is one level below the outcome, which would be nothing. Yeah. Well, I think there's possibly a better quality item. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. There's not really much in there, but there's something you mentioned when we were talking about it. Uh, right. If so, he'll just hold that over for possibly. So yeah, to add to add a small <laughs> bonus or add a small, it would be too small. It costs twice as much to add uh, a special uh, uh, value. Okay. Um, the other thing you could do is because there sometimes are risks, you could spend any bonus outcomes on removing risk. Mm. So it's a way to kind of I did really good. I know it's risky. I will get rid of the risk by doing so well. Could I save it as a bonus for the next roll? Since it's not complete yet? Sure. Cool. Um, then I will... a, a temporary a special resource. Then risk. What am I rolling for risk? Uh, there's no risk in this particular item. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so small. small. Um, but you um, can add up. You can possibly get another small benefit, and then two small benefits give you uh, a... A single yeah. special effect. Um, do you mind if I roll for the fourth week now? It's since it's the two weeks are all one thing. Yep. Is there any other difference you want? You could spend that small benefit to invest in the roll if you wanted to, which gives you a plus two. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, sure. Yeah, because there's nothing else to that. So, okay. Yeah, he'll add the plus two to it. So 16. 16. Okay. Oops. Um, that is again too small. So the one small consumed making the item, 
You have one small bonus, but there's nothing really to be done with that. Okay. Um, it makes it a really nice item. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else we could really do with that, so. Okay. Sometimes you just get overpay. It's a chance to get a bonus, but not necessarily to get one. All right. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Um, Annie, having spent a very pleasant week with the Wintrips and seeing their farm well underway, uh, noticing that Rex is still very slow, um, the effect of, of uh, the, I guess you could say, the, the uh, sort of shadow engulfed Sedona having robbed him of some of his years, and him being only human, uh, he got up a little bit... Uh, later every day it seems for a while but after a general pleasantly pleasant week even though you were kind of cramming for finals if you will and i know this feeling of stepping your head into the book and not finding anything you need for a week you head back into town nope. for some networking to meet some people yep uh i do leave the um uh one small money with them for to pay for someone to stay for the whole year as i said i would uh, and, and if they uh, refuse, I insist. <laughs> Rex refuses, and Alma takes you aside <laughs> uh, and says, if, "You know, for his pride, he won't do it. For the farm, I will. Thank you so much." Uh, don't forget to ask them about the hiding. Our oh trouble. yes, yes, and I, I, I will say, uh, if they can, uh, if I can leave something with them. I don't Oops. think anybody's going to come looking for it, but I just don't want it to get in the wrong hands either. Just don't hide it in a cow. I won't. Uh, and I, I will give her... Uh, the, I, I'll have it wrapped up in a blanket or something. Like, okay. And just if you can just put this somewhere safe. I'm sure I can find a place. And so she's going she's gonna to put it in the root cellar. Uh, behind some of the other preserves. So you can't even see it unless you've had a half a year's worth of preserves. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but she does let you know where it is. Yeah. All right. Good deed done. Head back into town feeling good. Going to meet some people. So with networking, it does cost money or contacts. The outcome level is the same level as the cost. First resource gained will be contacts, and then it can be rumors or information or more contacts. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I'll use uh, the contacts that I got from my guard work. Okay. They introduce uh, you to people that they like and so forth and so on. Yep. Um, risk is one level below cost. Cost is currently small, so risk is un, uh, not necessary or not available. Uh, so you don't have to worry about complications. Resolve using either insight or persuasion. And I am open to other skills. Uh, I will use persuasion. Okay. So. And are you going to add other investments to make it easier? Hmm. No, I think I'm just going to bas basically just be doing odd jobs for people that I see around, basically, is the way I'm thinking of it. Okay. It's just... Get that goodwill flowing. Make it so that pe a few people here and there recognize me. Like, oh, that's that person that helped help me put up my blinds that one time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or I don't know. <laughs> sure. No, that, that uh, works. But... The, the little deeds, especially in the reconstruction that needs to happen right now in Aelthbotter, lots of people still need need a lot of little jobs and a lot of help. So it definitely works out. That, that's the, the vibe that she, she, the idea that I have for it. So. Awesome. With uh, your persuasion roll straight up, let's see what the result is. 13. 13 gets you one small outcome. So that will be contacts. Okay. And I'll change that uh, from small deeds. There you go. So sometimes it's it's hard to invest or you just don't know the the, the right things to say. But you netted basically the exact cost you had, so it didn't lose you anything. And that would be the kind of thing, too, where there would be potentially renown increase. Again, not really sure what I'm doing with renown yet, so it's kind of a side yeah. project. For Medric's third week. 
Uh, beginning the Temple gonna... of Ignis. Yeah. Or at least start. All right. Tiny temple. So starting a construction. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Where are we here? How have I not... Where the hell did it go? <laughs> it's not that long a list, I swear. Long-term construction. So uh, the, the length of time the actual construction take depends upon the size of the thing you're building. In this case, I think you were literally talking a small temple, um, yeah. which would be nowhere near the size it was. It was a medium temple. Mm -hmm. uh, small temples, uh, small construction takes two weeks, so it'll be two weeks of your activities. Okay. So uh, the, the stuff I had written for week four is, is not happening? You don't have to do them all consecutively. You can get started... And then either you can pay someone else to finish it, but it costs a lot more. Uh, yeah. Or you can uh, pick it up later. So you have the basics of it. The foundation is there, but you haven't got uh, the full the full roof on. Uh, the cost is the same level as the outcome. So it has to be at least a small cost. The full cost is paid at the beginning of the construction. And then every week after that, an ongoing cost is paid, which is one level lower than the initial cost. Since the initial cost is small, the ongoing cost is none. Um, if you're building a medium building, the ongoing cost would be small. So basically, okay. um, it's all about labor <coughs> for that first week, which is your time spent on it. Um, you can uh, make additional investments of money, contacts, uh, favors, or materials to benefit the outcome so you can make a, a better roll on it. Um, the resolve is generally just going to be the thing continues. Um, the bonuses, we'll, we'll hold over the bonuses like we did for Silas's item, which is you can spend that later to overcome uh, or to uh, add on to future rolls. So you'll have a special small, for example, that you can add as a plus two to your next roll. Um, or if you're building something bigger, there could be comp uh, complications like debt <laughs> or uh, a setback, and you could spend that bonus to get rid of those things as well. I hope that makes sense. Kind of. <laughs> the the smaller ones are pretty easy anyway. It's just you pay a small amount. Uh, resolve using appropriate skill. So what would be Medrick's uh, skill he could contribute to building this thing? Uh, either directly or if he's directing other people. I'm not sure. Because uh, there was a guy at the Three Bells, uh, Lawrence, I think you said, yep. who offered to help with the construction, assuming he's done fixing that one room at the Three Bells. <laughs> Let's consider that to be a, uh, a, let me see, a small favor resource. So he'll do you yeah. a favor for that. So you can and I'd, I'd be helping him out too, like hauling stuff back and forth. So he has to do less tasks and I have to pay less money. <laughs> okay. And I actually like, oh, I'm going to learn about construction. That's cool. Yeah, Usually I, I swing hammers at people's faces. Now I get to swing, at, to swing a hammer at nails. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I'm um, assuming that would cost like more money if I hire his, if I use his services. Well, he, he, is a small, he is a small favor, which you've gotten for free. Okay. So you can spend the small favor and he'll give you a plus two in your roll. Um, yeah, essentially that's that. The chance is too, if you have an additional outcome, you might have a, it might have enough outcome for a contact or a favor. If it was a contact, he might put you in, in touch with someone else who can help you on the next one. If it's a favor, then basically you can keep his favor. So if I keep his favor, I just don't get the plus two on this roll right now? If you just want to keep it, that's right. I'll use the favor now, I guess. Then I'll help him out too. Okay. Um, Where is the dice roller? Hmm. Just want to double check something here. Because favors cost double, I actually want to give them a better bonus. Let's say the 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 bonus is one level higher. So a small favor gives you plus four. A medium favor gives you. Uh, plus eight, and a large favor gives you plus 16, which basically guarantees it's going to succeed. However, a large favor also can get you a lot in a role-playing sense. 
So for spending so a small... So like, you essentially gave me this small favor for free? Yes, yeah. Okay. That's what's going to happen too, is that during role play, I will frame certain things as these resources now. So it makes it a little easier. So for example, you meet someone and you impress them. Hey, maybe they'll give you a small favor or it might be a contact you can use later on. And then you can weave it into downtime or you can bring it out of downtime to use in non-downtime stuff. Well then, I guess if Lawrence is ever sick or if anybody in his family is ever sick, he can just come to the completed temple afterwards and it's like, hey, have some healing. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'll use that favor for the temple in week three. And I'm assuming like, if he's good at building, he can do it in such a way that the building can like easily be added on to in the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume that, you know, kind of like the uh, the uh, video games where you build things. It's like, well, I don't have to tear <laughs> down the entire thing to build around it. Sure. So you're going to roll at plus four. What are you going to roll? What's your resolve? Uh... Can I use okay. athletics again? Because I'm hauling stuff for him, so he all he has to do is like the actual building and not the carrying his things. Sure. Okay. It takes a lot of muscle Wait. to raise a building. Yep. So that's so, plus five, plus four. Uh, it's. What's the plus five from? From my athletics. Oh yeah, yeah. Your athletic skill plus four. Yes. All right. And we're still on small outcomes. Let's do this. 28. Hey. Wow. Oh, yeah. No. Wait. Yeah. 28. Wow. That's a great roll. <laughs> well, the chart, the chart tops out at six at 26. <laughs> so okay. you've got the top result. That is six small benefits. So the way I would suggest you there that you might be able to frame this uh, favors cost two mm -hmm. uh, and contacts cost one. Or you can bank those against future costs, essentially. Uh, but what I might suggest is that you can have his favor continue. So you can spend two to keep his favor. If you want to phrase it this way, you could also say that because you're doing this, you could have additional favors. Things went really well that first week. Lawrence has friends. Yes, okay, contacts. Well, it could be favors. So they'll give you a, a big bonus on the future roles. Uh, or it could be like other people pitched in and now they feel like they want to help out. So that could be favors elsewhere. Or they could be contacts. You're making your name known in town and people are going, hey, you know, I can help you with something later. Or I will I know how to get in touch with somebody. So it's up to you how you want to spend those. Because it's a public activity. Okay, so I'll spend two to keep Lawrence's favor. Okay. And you said contacts were one each or two each? One each. Okay. Yeah, so I'll get two contacts and one more favor. Okay. And she stepped away just as we go back to Annie. I'm right here. <laughs> Isn't it Silas's turn? Oh, wait, no. Silas has already done his four turns. I we needed did, more water. I'm sorry. We just did the last two right together to make it easier. Okay. Um, and for Annie... I believe I was going to do a little bit of uh, snooping of around, snooping slash uh, conspiracy theory <laughs> mode activate. All right. So snooping is a little risky. Yep. Uh, it does cost favors, contacts, information, or rumors generally to get started. Um. Would the because I'm working off of the information that we have about the Baron and the, I'm basically going looking based on stuff that we found during role play. Okay. I'll give you a, a basically the, the small rumors necessary to get started. So uh, the outcome level is we, the same as the cost. Sorry, go ahead. But basically we, we already are looking into this. We have a basic okay. blanket of, we know something's going on. Yep, you don't I'm know anything go. certain, but you do have some rumors that you can start with. I'm I'm full I'm fully for that. Cool. Now, uh, the outcome will be the same as the cost, so you're kind of doing small small rumors to start with, so small outcome, just a little bit to go forth. The resources you gained can be information or additional rumors, keeping in mind that information is more expensive. It is also yep. possible to get money, contacts, or favor, depending on the kind of snooping around you're doing. 
uh, like you know something about someone or you help somebody in a, in a circumstance. This seems unlikely in this case, <laughs> yeah. but uh, if you can make a case for it, I'm fine for it. Um, I'm assuming you're going to use stealth to resolve this with. Yeah, she, she wants to do some, some retcon on like get a layout of the area around it, see if there's anything in the area that seems suspicious as well. Okay. Now, snooping carries a medium risk automatically. So there yep. is a high, high risk involved, uh, and, but you can save against that, and you can spend additional resources to avoid that risk potentially or to add bonuses to your risk of avoidance. But let's start with the outcomes. You might gain enough outcomes that um, you can mitigate your risk pretty well. Cool. Uh, so I will use stealth. Okay. Pretty good base. 16. 16. Okay. That gives you two small. So you Perfect. can choose what those are, which would be one information. So you know something certain. You could pick up uh, a total of, well, two spends to get a total of four rumors about them. Mm -hmm. What would you choose oh. in this case? I will choose one information. Okay. So that's your two resources purchased. Now your yep. risk. Yeah. Risk is medium. Uh, it's still the same difficulty, but the danger, the things, the results are higher. In this case, mm -hmm. it's a saving throw. I think dexterity seems reasonable for this kind of thing. Try not to be caught. You can spend resources to gain uh, 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 bonuses on the roll. Small res gets you, resource gets you plus two, and you can spend up to three. Um. Hmm. Would could my um, because I would have gotten like I have my my job. Can I use my job as a? I, I'm I'm just working. Uh, sure. Why not? I, I'm seems... looking into something for Verandale. It's... So you're you're going to potentially involve that resource. Of having your job, it's kind of your kind of a contact resource with Verandel yeah. that you're spending here. Um, yep. Okay. Yep. It, it, it's a case of I, I I'm not lying. I am doing something, looking into something for Verandel. <laughs> okay. So you're going to use that excuse. Let's see if that actually works for you. So it's a uh, saving throw plus two. Got this. Oh my god. Uh, I did not expect uh, something that big already. Plus two, so 11. So 11? Okay, you're lucky. 11 puts you in the next category, but it is one medium consequence. Yep. Um, so possible consequences include debt, injury, or setback, which means the setback is the next time you try this, it's going to take you an additional week. Um, injury means you're going to be injured, and there's no additional downtime after this, so you won't have time to recover from that injury immediately. So you will have a penalty that can be overcome with some magic, uh, although it's a medium injury, which is rough. Uh, or debt, which is you owe somebody something because you got caught. Now, it could uh, be money. It doesn't have to be. Oh, the diamond. Oh, the diamond. No. <laughs> that will not happen. Uh... I fell and injured myself. Okay, you have a medium injury. So, a medium injury. Um, do, 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 here we go. A medium injury uh, imposes either a minus two penalty to all of your physical or all your mental traits, or a minus one penalty to all traits. Uh, a medium injury can be overcome with a greater restoration or two weeks of recovery. And lesser restoration can be used to turn a medium injury into a small injury. Mm. So you get a choice. Did it phys physically hurt you? Or are you rattled by what happened? Or just overall, was it a holy shit, holy shit, holy shit moment? Um, 
I think it would be an overall holy shit moment. Okay. And um, I don't remember if there's a yeah. cost to Lester Restoration. So knowing a cleric yeah, that's what is I'm really looking handy. at right now. <laughs> <laughs> there is no cost to Restoration. It just gets rid of a poisoner disease. Greater is the only one that has a cost to it. Um, yeah, it's a disease or a condition. So in this case, essentially, it's a condition. Um, so knowing a cleric is good. Knowing a cleric who knows how to do that and is available, also good. But that will be something where in uh, in roleplay times, because this actually just happened on your last week, uh, you get to come to Medric with your being shaken. I like rolled, kind of got too close to the edge of the, the cape and kind of fell and... Oh no. Well, come check out the new temple. Ow. Speaking Ow. speaking of which, Ow. perfect timing. You're you're in first. Speaking of which, um, you can continue to work on the temple, but I think you wrote out uh, religious surface, which is yeah. uh, the temple is not completed yet, but oh, you okay. can use it as a location. It doesn't gain you any benefits at this point. Uh, could I continue to work on the temple instead? You I mean, can it takes definitely weeks. do so, yep. And you have the potential of finishing the small temple this week. So, uh, once again, this is constructing, uh, long-term construction. Uh, there's no ongoing cost, so that part is paid. Now you can pay additional investments to make your roll better if you want. Okay. You have a bunch of uh, resources now which can be spent. Yeah, I'll use uh, Lawrence's favor again. Okay. So that adds plus four. You can add two more investments. Um, I had one one more favor from the week before, so let's do that. I'm assuming Lawrence knows other like construction people. Absolutely. All right. Starting to gain a little little uh, uh, well being in the town. People are like, oh yeah, we need to get behind this. And uh, Lawrence was a good into the. Uh, Builders Union, I guess. So that'll be a plus eight. You do have the option of adding one more resource to it, another investment. Uh, can I help them out still for another, like, athletic plus five? Oh, yeah, you still have your resolve roll, but you have total right now of, of uh, plus eight onto that roll because you're cashing in two favors. Yeah, that's... Probably good. So I got two contacts, but there's not really a reason to use contacts right now. No, you can hold on to them. Okay. So it's a, it's a roll plus 13 at this point, so <laughs> you're guaranteed to finish. That's good. Nat 20, come on. No, no this, this is not Nat 20. Damn it. 21. <laughs> oh, well, it's still... Still finishing. It does finish. Um, it's four small would be the resources gained. Uh, the uh, one small is consumed by the building itself. That gives you three small in result. Okay. You can spend those on contacts. You can get another favor. I would say you could invest in the building to make it exceptional for its small size. It would give it a small bonus, but not much. All right. I has building. You has building. And you will be able to welcome Annie in as client number. Here's your ticket, 001. <laughs> so I'll have I one also, favor. Also, Silas has been popping in during this last couple of weeks to check in on the progress. Not able to spend too much time there because he's got other things he's doing, but has been stopping in. I also would have gotten a bow. Yes, yes. I will write that up for roll 20 for you. I don't have it at the moment. I said, or actually, maybe I do have right. that. So I'll have one favor and one contact. So that leaves me at one favor overall and three contacts overall. Awesome. You made some connections and you have a temple. Hey. Um, Oh, yeah, you should have Azamunta's branch in your, uh, or yeah. available to you now. So I did write it up. Go, big, go figure. 
All right. Now, this was much better than uh, us doing this for five months, <laughs> as seemed to be the case last week. I know that it's a little bit rough, and there's a little bit of kind of on-the-fly on the kind of uh, updates. But hopefully it was a little more interesting than that and a little bit more um, fruitful, both in terms of getting things done and having other things you can spend, uh, like these resources, on normal game time. Yeah. Um, I, will I just be... blinded myself with the light. Sorry. <laughs> you can't. Can't, cannot stare into the light in real life. Oh, right. <laughs> That's deep role play is what that is. Uh, so uh, we've run a little bit long tonight, but uh, we got through that. Um, what and I, I have would a say, temple. Absolutely. What I would say is those resources you gain that you still have net, uh, send the list to me. Um, and if, for example, for contacts, let me know if you want me to pick a particular person that represents that. It doesn't have to at this point because they're fairly floating. Um, obviously, Lawrence and a second builder should be something I could make as an NPC uh, or get a little bit deeper. But anything that is information or rumors, uh, write down what subject it, it applies to and think about whether you want to reveal those now or later. Um, uh, what I will do is I will actually write out what they are and have them on hand so that whenever you cho choose to reveal them, I will give them to you. Uh, and at that point, they become applicable bonuses, uh, one-time bonuses to, to your roles in the future. Or to a role in the future. Cool beans. All right. Uh, before we finish, can Silas do his thing? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Annie. <clears throat> Silas comes to see you at the Three Bells one morning. Yeah. <laughs> he waits until you are awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's more like I'm all bruised. Don't have oh, nobody. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, he opens, he opens the door, he's like, where's Andy? It's not bad. <laughs> um, it just hurts to move. Everything's stiff. What did you fall from? Cape Raven. Okay. <laughs> the edge of the Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Um... We, I know we had a disagreement earlier about Cyrene. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Cyrene. <laughs> um, you made me remember why I why I don't kill. And I wanted to give you something. You don't uh, need he, to. Uh, he hands over a small, like, folded cloth thing that you can unroll. And I do that. inside, there's a pair of goggles. Uh, you would probably recognize that the lenses are the same crystal as the magic crystals we had seen and used. Um, what is the color of Annie's normal adventuring gear? Um, it's probably very plain, but she would have like a little bit of like purpley and golds in it is kind of the color palette I have for her. Okay. Um, the like the strap for them uh, is kind of a dark purple. Uh, probably so, some cloth that you might have seen uh, at some point around, like one of the tailor shops. Um, there might be a little bit of gold in it, but you notice that it actually has silver wires threaded through it. Um, and he says, uh, I was hoping to make something stronger, but this will help you at night. Um, and he said, if you put it on <clears throat> and uh, probably just like you touch like a spot here on it. Yeah. Um, and he says, it'll let you see in the dark for an hour. Cool. My apologies for before. I hope this helps make up for it. 
I understand why you were, you thought the way that you did. And I have no blame for you for it. I just, if you can't go around hurting the people who help you or else no one will help you. I understand. At least that's the way I, I see it. Well, I hope it proves useful. Uh, I'm afraid it can't heal the massive bruising you have. Have you seen Medrick? Not yet. I just got back. Have you tried the tea? <laughs> she said the tea was restorative. I just got back. I think Medrick has the tea, so I'm probably going to take a nap and you do so. Um, uh, the The ground is still kind of damp. Slipped on some mud, you know. From Cape Raven, yes. <laughs> uh, and far away, Medrick is like hammering, building stuff. And it's be like, oh, I got tea in my pocket. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but it, it, it would be in your room, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the three bells I mean, yeah. one of you guys would have the, the stuff there so okay let's uh silas will head back to probably performing or something but uh and he wanted I to give it i don't have that m specifically in in roll 20 but basically it is uh um um i think maybe goggles of twilight they're not quite gogg goggles of night they are a limited vo version of that that gives you one hour of blind of dark sight or dark vision i should say I can see a thing. And they're non mm -hmm. non attunement as well. So, yeah. So there we go. That was the beta test of of, of downtime. One session and it's over. Look at that. Ooh. And it got, got, it got faster as we With get going. So we, yeah, it was super confusing at first, but like yeah, as we got along and I, I started re re remembering things more, then yeah, it got yeah. better. And it'll get a bit honestly. I started we do. making. A, a spreadsheet and I think like that might be the easiest way to manage it is just like an Excel sheet yeah, I yeah. sent send it to you Mark okay cool yeah um, whatever means you need uh, to kind of, I, I did kind of suggest you'd want to be able to track these things whatever way you feel comfortable with but is best um, the idea is that while you're doing downtime these things are a little ephemeral uh, because you might be receiving and spending them pretty quick uh, and at the end of downtime, you end up with hopefully a bunch of resources you can use towards um, the the, uh, the the regular gameplay, uh, and possibly, as lay in this case, a free a new location. You have a small temple of Ignis that uh, hey. start garnering attention. Uh, Wait, that not... means I'm going to have to move out of the Three Bells, possibly. I don't have to. I mean, oh. Although you might want to live at the temple to make sure it's yeah. okay. <laughs> And it is but small, you, but it, so you presumably you have, the have whole thing going, yeah. like a small room or something. Yep, yep. Lots of places you can light fires that aren't going to burn the building down, that sort of thing. Yeah. All right. And if you wanted to uh, kind of detail a little bit further what that looks like, I'd love to see that. You know, if you want to get okay. a little bit more thought to the layout or the or whatever, and that means I can also build it as a location, and then we can have a fight there. Wait. No. <laughs> <laughs> give it like four months or so. <laughs> but um yeah so there we'll we're going to what we'll likely i'll try to do is we'll have a a storyline of some kind we'll come to some sort of resolution and then there'll be a week or two of downtime that sort of thing um as it is right now um the you're one week away from the the uh the uh summer festival as well that's on the 17th um, the other thing that happened in there that we kind of mentioned at the beginning and then we never really got back to, uh, whether Annie wants to celebrate her birthday with her friends uh, or, or bring any attention to it whatsoever. She That's probably would have, like, made, like, insisted on be before we go, like, everybody goes and takes, like, their own time doing their own thing. Like, let's have dinner. <laughs> okay. Just normal dinner at the th at the three bells that she insists on she might she, she would say that she just wants to to celebrate she usually it's just something personal that happens yeah. 
Let's have dinner. It's my birthday. Where's my, my birthday? Where's my prezzies? Where's my prezzies? No. <laughs> and Silas is like, it's going to take me a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, actually, she, she might like Here's less of restoration. She's like, it, it's the first time that I'm not like with family when uh, mm. on my birthday. So it's kind of weird. So gathering your, your new family together over a nice meal. Yep. She'd make There's... also make sure Gaetano was there because it's in the first week so before he left yep yep yeah he he knows he knows when your birthday oh, is yeah. oh uh, yeah but uh other than slide sly comments about how old you are hey les do they know that you're and it's like <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the whole ancientness that is at 19 <laughs> you're only most illegal drinking age in elf water <laughs> being able to hold up your cup i think okay, um, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah. She's nineteen. What is that in royal years? <laughs> is it like dog years? Anyway, um, so there we go. Uh, thank you very much for uh, playing, guys. It was a little bit of an unusual session, but we'll be leading into new plot stuff next week, uh, and uh, and getting it back into it. Uh, I look forward to hearing what you have your information for. So I will have all those bits and pieces ready. Uh, and if there's a particular direction you want to go, and you can discuss this amongst the three of you if you wish, uh, let me know so I can prepare in that direction. Right now I'm preparing in about five different directions, and it feels like I don't know which one that I need to lean on the most. So uh, I think we need to go with the girl with her parents. Yeah, a little, a yeah, little heads up. Yeah, girl and Clockwinder, but probably the Baron first. Okay. I think Baron, then Clock, Clockwinder okay. is Annie's priorities. Okay. That, that that sets it for me. Uh, I will make sure to uh, to to push in those directions and have things ready for you. For those of you Get who've been it. watching, what's that? Get to it now. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, if only that was the way it worked. Uh, for those of you who've been watching, thank you very much. Hopefully this is smoother. Uh, I've made some hardware adjustments and some uh, swearing and magical incantations to make my computer work a little bit smoother. I hope it actually did. At least one of the problems we were having uh, recently with uh, stuttering audio and video, that seems to be gone, at least from the three of us. Uh, hopefully others will be as well. You can check out the cool. results. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles playlists. There's one specifically for this campaign, as well as one from the last campaign, and one playlist that covers everything. You can also catch us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. Look for us on Sunday afternoons. That would be around 3 o'clock Atlantic time. We were a little late today because those hardware problems I mentioned all came to a head <laughs> two minutes before I decided to go live. Uh, mm -hmm. but they seem to have settled down a little bit. So thank you for uh, watching. You can also catch us on facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I. That's where you can join the watchers and see a summary of previous episodes uh, as well as chat. I swear we'll stop in there and chat uh, any day now. That's it. Uh, have a great day. Have uh, uh, Thanks, my folks, for playing. Thanks for running. <laughs> and we'll see you again next week for more Legends. <laughs>